Wait, before we start, do you want a bundle of 30 printable Hebrew PDF cheat sheets teaching you words and phrases for conversations for free? Then click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get access. How are your Greek listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Ένας άντρας και μια γυναίκα κοιτάζουν τον κατάλογο σε ένα εστιατόριο. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay, τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Ένας άντρας και μια γυναίκα κοιτάζουν τον κατάλογο σε ένα εστιατόριο. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay, τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi, my name is Eleni and we will do the Greek weekly words today. So let's see what is the um, uh, word of this week. Fruits, fruta. So the first word is ananas, pineapple. We don't have a lot of pineapples in Greece, but uh, we had uh, different kind of fruits actually. We had a lot of grapes, so stafilia. We have a lot of oranges, uh, portocalia. We had a lot of mandarins, so mandarinia. Pear, a lot of pearls, so uh, achlavia. Δεν έχουμε καθόλου ananades στην Ελλάδα. We don't have at all uh, pineapples in Greece. Peponi, melon. We love melon in Greece and we eat it very much during summer because it's very fresh. Να σου κόψω λίγο πεπόνι για να δροσιστείς. Do you want me to give you some melon to refresh yourself? Μήλο, apple. Ένα μήλο την ημέρα, το γιατρό τον κάνει πέρα. Uh, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Φράουλα, strawberry. Μ' αρέσουν πάρα πολύ φράουλες. Uh, I love strawberries. Μ' αρέσουν πάρα πολύ τα milkshake με γεύση φράουλα. I love very much strawberry milkshakes. Πορτοκάλι. Orange. So, in Greece we are using a lot uh, of uh, the orange peel and we use it to make some cakes. Χρησιμοποίησα τη φλούδα του πορτοκαλιού για να δώσω άρωμα στο κέικ. I used orange peel to give a particular aroma to my cake. Thank you very much for watching us. If you want to leave your comment, please feel free to let us know what do you like. And if you want to learn more Greek words, take a look on our website, so greekpod101.com. And thank you very much again and goodbye. See you. Γεια σα, είμαι η Στεφανία. Το Σάββατο πριν την Κυριακή τη Απόκρεο, κατά τη δεύτερη εβδομάδα του Καρναβαλιού, και το Σάββατο πριν την Κυριακή τη Πεντηκοστή, λέγεται Ψυχοσάββατο ή Σάββατο των Ψυχών. Τα δύο Ψυχοσάββατα αυτά γιορτάζονται 57 ημέρε πριν το Πάσχα και 48 ημέρε μετά το Πάσχα, αντίστοιχα, είναι αφιερωμένα στου νεκρού. 
Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώς οι Έλληνες τιμούν τους νεκρούς τα ψυχοσάββατα. Γνωρίζετε ποιο είναι το νόημα της παροιμίας «Κάνει νημόσυνο με ξανακόλυβα» Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Η Ορθόδοξη Εκκλησία προσεύχεται για τους νεκρούς κάθε Σάββατο η ανάμνηση του Χριστού που πέθανε κατά το Μεγάλο Σάββατο. Παρ' όλα αυτά, τα ψυχοσάββατα έχουν καθιερωθεί προς τη μήνα αυτών που πέθανα χωρίς να έχει πραγματοποιηθεί ποτέ για αυτούς, για διάφορους λόγους, ένα μνημόσυνο, η τελετή κατά την οποία ζητείται από τον Θεό να συγχωρέσει και να αναπαύσει την ειρήνη όσους έχουν φύγει από κοντά μας. Πολλοί κάνουν μνημόσυνα για τους νεκρούς συγγενείς τους και επισκέπτονται τους τάφους τους για να περιποιηθούν το μνήμα, να το καθαρίσουν, να αφήσουν λουλούδια, να λιβανίσουν και να ανάψουν το καντήλι. Πριν την έλευση του χριστιανισμού, τα μνημόσυνα αποτελούσαν έθιμο των αρχαίων Ελλήνων, οι οποίοι με δεήσεις, θυσίες και προσφορές ζητούσαν συγχώρεση για τις αμαρτίες των νεκρών. Σήμερα, μνημόσυνα γίνονται ως εξή. Καταρχάς, αναγγέλλονται μέσω εφημερίδων ή με ειδικά αγγελτήρια που επικολούνται στη γειτονιά όπου ζούσε νεκρός. Έπειτα, σαλέτε τρισάγιο στον τάφο του νεκρού από ιερέα ή γίνεται ειδική δέηση στην εκκλησία μετά τη θεία λειτουργία. Στο τέλο, πάντα μοιράζονται τα κόλληβα στου παρευρισκόμενου και μερικέ φορέ ακολουθεί τραπέζι. Τα κόλληβα είναι ένα νόστιμο γλυκό αποβρασμένο σιτάρι, ρόδι, ξηρού καρπού, σταφίδε, κανέλα και μερικέ φορέ ζάχαρη άχνη. Παλιότερα τα ετοίμαζαν στα σπίτια. Σήμερα όμω ετοιμάζονται σε ζαχαροπλαστία ή ειδικά εργαστήρια. Μετά το μνημόσυνο, ό,τι περισσέψει, μοιράζεται σε συγγενεί και φίλου για να φαγωθεί και να συγχωρεθεί έτσι συμβολικά ο νεκρό. Η χριστιανική συνήθεια των κόλυβων πιστεύεται ότι προέρχεται από την συνήθεια των αρχαίων Ελλήνων να προσφέρουν στου νεκρού την πανσπερμία, ένα μείγμα σιταριού και άλλων καρπών. Στην Κρήτη, την παραμονή και ανήμερα του Ψυχοσάββατου δεν κόβουν δέντρα γιατί πιστεύουν ότι οι ψυχέ κάθονται σε αυτά και μα παρακολουθούν. Αν κάποιο κόψει ένα κλαδί, οι ψυχέ θα πέσουν κάτω και θα παραπονεθούν. Και τώρα θα σας δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Γνωρίζετε ποιο είναι το νόημα της παροιμίας «Κάνει νημόσυνο με ξανακόλυβα»? Η παροιμία αυτή σημαίνει ότι κάποιος επωφελείται από τις προσπάθειες άλλων, τις οποίες παρουσιάζει ως δικές του προσπάθειες. Πολύ συχνά λέγεται και για κάποιον που θέλει να δείξει ότι είναι χουβαρδάς, αλλά χρησιμοποιώντα χρήματα άλλων. Πώς σας φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό? Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον? Εσείς έχετε παρόμοια έθιμα στη χώρα σας? Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! Hello everyone and welcome to GreekPod101. I'm Emmanuel and I will be your teacher for today. And good luck with this. <laughs> As the holidays are coming, Most of you will uh, visit Greece, so I will make you a lesson about 10 things to do in Greece in the summer. Let's start. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. To travel abroad. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. Ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό. To travel abroad. Μ' αρέσει να ταξιδεύω στο εξωτερικό και ειδικά στην Ευρώπη. I love to travel abroad, especially in Europe. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. To relax at the beach. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. Χαλαρώνω στη παραλία. To relax at the beach. Πώς να χαλαρώσω στη παραλία με τη δυνατή μουσική που έχουν όλα τα μπαρ. How to relax in the beach with that loud music from the bars. This is a main problem in Greece. All the beach bars, they have loud music, so you cannot easily find a quiet spot. Μαθαίνω ελληνικά με το GreekPod101.com To learn Greek with GreekPod101.com This is a good one. <laughs> Μαθαίνω ελληνικά με το GreekPod101.com I learn Greek with GreekPod101.com So now you know, when they will ask you how you learn Greek, you will tell them Μαθαίνω ελληνικά 
με το Greek Pot 101. Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά. To learn to cook Greek food. Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά. Μαθαίνω να μαγειρεύω ελληνικά φαγητά. I learn to cook Greek food. Η γυναίκα του που είναι ξένη έχει μάθει να μαγειρεύει ελληνικά φαγητά. His wife, who is foreigner, has learned to cook Greek food. Κάνω barbecue to have a barbecue. Κάνω barbecue. Κάνω barbecue. Κάποιος κάνει barbecue γιατί μυρίζει τσίκνα. Someone is making a barbecue because it smells like a roasted meat. This is a major thing in Greece. We always, every day, every week, every month, we have barbecue in our houses. So, <laughs> it's a common thing. You will find it everywhere. Especially with souvlakis. Especially with souvlakia, to say it correctly. Gledao oli ti nichta. To party all night. Gledao oli ti nichta. Gledao oli ti nichta. To party all night. Στο γάμο, οι καλεσμένοι γλέντισαν όλη τη νύχτα. At the wedding, the guests were parting all night. Μαυρίζω. To get a tan. Μαυρίζω. To get a tan. Πω πω, έχεις μαυρίσει πολύ. Wow, you got so tanned. Ωραίο. Πηγαίνω για πεζοπορία. To go hiking. Πηγαίνω για πεζοπορία. Go hiking. Σκεφτόμαστε να πάμε για πεζοπορία αυτό το Σαββατοκύριακο. We are thinking to go for hiking this weekend. Because in Greece we are very sporty and our lifestyle is all the time in the nature. We usually go for hiking or making other kind of activities like running, cycling and weightlifting. So it's something common. I'm going for running every day. Εργάζομαι σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης. To work a part-time job. Εργάζομαι σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης. Εργάζομαι σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης. To work a part-time job. Αυτή τη στιγμή εργάζεται σε θέση μερικής απασχόλησης και με το ζόρι τα βγάζει πέρα. At that time, she has a part-time job and she barely make it financially. Διασκεδάζω με φίλους. To have fun with friends. This is a good one. Διασκεδάζω με φίλους. To have fun with friends. Μου αρέσει να διασκεδάζω με τους φίλους μου παίζοντας μπιλιάρδο. I like to have fun with my friends playing pool. So, that's it for today. Hope you find it interesting. If you want to learn more, you can go to greekpod101.com and you can subscribe to the channel. And see you soon with more lessons. Take care. Have a nice day. Αναγκαστικά Λόγω των κακών βαθών. How are your Greek listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Ένα άντρα μιλάει με μια υπάλληλο ενό καταστήματο. Ποιο πουκάμισο θα αγοράσει, hmm. Ποιο πουκάμισο νομίζετε ότι είναι καλύτερο, Το άσπρο ή το μπλε. Ε, λοιπόν, νομίζω ότι το μπλε είναι καλό. Πηγαίνει καλά με τον γκρι σακάκι σας. Νομίζετε. Αλλά δεν ταιριάζει με την κόκκινη γραμβάτα μου. Ή μήπως ταιριάζει. Συμφωνώ.
Οκ, okay. τότε θα πάρω το άσπρο, όχι το μπλε. Ποιο πουκάμισο θα αγοράσει? Ένας άντρα μιλάει με μια υπάλληλο ενός καταστήματος. Ποιο πουκάμισο θα αγοράσει? Hmm. Ποιο πουκάμισο νομίζετε ότι είναι καλύτερο? Το άσπρο ή το μπλε? Ε, λοιπόν, νομίζω ότι το μπλε είναι καλό. Πηγαίνει καλά με το γκρι σακάκι σας. Νομίζετε? Αλλά δεν ταιριάζει με την κόκκινη γραμβάτα μου. Ή μήπω ταιριάζει. Hmm, συμφωνώ. Οκ, okay. τότε θα πάρω το άσπρο, όχι το μπλε. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Did you download your free PDF cheat sheets yet? These conversation cheat sheets are an easy way to speak more because you get cheat sheets for conversational topics like the weather, family, hobbies, and much more. And inside, you'll learn common questions and answers that you'd use in conversations, as well as tons of vocabulary. Don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description to get access. Hi, everybody. My name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Sameach. Happy. Sameach. Sameach. Happy. אני שמחה להכיר אותך. I'm happy to get to know you. אני שמחה להכיר אותך. עצובה. Sad. עצובה. עצובה. סאד. זה עצוב להיות לבד בימי שבת. It's sad to be alone on Saturdays. זה עצוב להיות לבד בימי שבת. כועס. angry. כועס. כועס. angry. למה את כל כך כועסת? why are you so angry? למה את כל כך כועסת. בגדים. clothing. בגדים. בגדים. clothing. שכבות של בגדים. Layers of clothing. שכבות של בגדים. נעל. שו. 
naal na al shu hanalaim hayuk tanot the shoes were small hanalaim hayu ktanot gerev sock gerev gerev sock Lilbosh garbei spot im naalei erev ze nirae meshune Wearing gym socks with dress shoes looks odd Lilbosh garbei spot im naalei erev ze nirae meshune Takhtonim Underwear. Tachtonim. Tachtonim. Underwear. Hagarbaim va tachtonim shali nimtsaim ba megira rishona ba rona bagadim shali. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. הגרביים והתחתונים שלי נמצאים במגירה הראשונה בארון הבגדים שלי. לדבר talk לדבר לדבר Talk. Who diber al ha project ha chadashelo? He talked about his new project. Who diber al ha project ha chadashelo? Latet. Give. La tête. La tête. Give. Ata yachol la tête li hanacha? Could you give me a discount? Ata yachol la tête li hanacha? Namuch. Low. Namuch. Na much. Low. Hamaskorat shali namuchamidai. The wage is too low. המשכורת שלי נמוכה מדי. גבוה. היי. גבוה. גבוה. היי. הבית נמצא Gvoa al-Rama. The house is high on a plateau. Habait nimtza gvoa al-Rama. Pri. Fruit. Pri. Pri. Fruit. אני רוצה לשתול כמה עצי פרי בגינה. 
I want to plant some fruit trees in the garden. אני רוצה לשתול כמה עצי פרי בגינה. תמנון אקטופוס תמנון תמה נון אקטופוס התמנון שוחה באוקיינוס. The octopus is swimming in the ocean. התמנון שוחה באוקיינוס. כריש שרק כריש כריש שרק השנה שבוע הכריש מתחיל מוקדם מהרגיל. This year, Shark Week starts earlier. השנה, שבוע הכריש מתחיל מוקדם מהרגיל. לוויתן ויל לוויתן לוויתן ויל הלוויתנים עולים בשביל לשאוף אוויר. The whales are coming up for air. הלוויתנים עולים בשביל לשאוף אוויר. מעונן. Cloudy. מעונן. מעונן. Cloudy. נהיה מעונן בחוץ. It's getting cloudy outside. נהיה מעונן בחוץ. קריר. קו. קריר. קריר. קו. חם במהלך היום, אבל קריר בלילה. It's hot during the day, but cool at night. חם במהלך היום, אבל קריר בלילה. מלפפון Cucumber מלפפון מלפפון Cucumber אני מכינה סלט ישראלי עם מלפפון ועגבניה. I make Israeli salad with cucumber and tomato. אני מכינה סלט ישראלי עם מלפפון ועגבניה. פלפל בל פפר פלפל פלפל בל פפר הפלפלים הנפוצים ביותר הם ירוקים, אדומים או צהובים. The most common bell peppers are green, red 
or yellow. Hapilpelim hanefotim beyoter hem yerukim adumim o tsehubim. Broccoli 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 Echata Mavashel Broccoli How do you cook broccoli? איך אתה מבשל ברוקולי? Well done! In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara, and this week's theme is flavors. OK, let's learn some Hebrew. Ta'am, flavor. So this word ta'am is flavor, as in what ice cream flavor do you like? But we also use it to say there's no point and bezetam. It also tastes like in good taste. He has good taste. Yesh lo ta'am tov. It's funny because it sounds like he's delicious. Kharif, spicy. There's usually a kind of spice that we just call it kharif, spicy. I don't even know what it's made of and maybe it refers to different kind of spicy spices, but that's how you call it. So when you go to a falafel stand, you can tell the vendor, simli harbe kharif, put a lot of spicy in my falafel. And one you really want to memorize is, bli kharif bevakasha, no spicy please, maluach, salty, uh, which comes from the word melach, salt. So the Dead Sea is called in Hebrew the salt sea because it's salty. Ugh, ha'orez hazeh maluach midai. This rice is too salty. Chamutz, sour. I like it because it goes well with the face that you make when you eat something sour. It's like chamutz. Limon hu chamutz. Lemon is sour. Matok, sweet. Maybe my favorite Israeli sweet is Sufganya, which is the Hanukkah donut. It's not a donut. I don't want to call it that. I think it's offensive to the Sufganya because it's so much better than that. And you have it at a cafe sheli matok. I like my coffee sweet. Like I like my men. This is the end of the video. We talked about flavors today. What is your favorite flavor? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to check out the site. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Greek listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Enos adras psachni ena doro genethlion yeti gineka tu se ena kosmimatopolio. Pio peridereo thaurasi. Boro nasas exipiretiso. Psachno en adoro genethlion ya ti ginecamo. Ti protinate. Lipon ti lete ya afto to peridereo. Hm. 
φαίνεται λίγο μακρύ. Αυτά εδώ έχουμε ένα μενταγιόν λουλούδι και ένα άλλο με μια καρδιά. Ψάχνω για κάτι λίγο πιο εκλεπτισμένο. Πόσο κάνει αυτό εδώ το κολλιέ από πέρλες? Είναι στα 500 ευρώ. Hm. Αυτό είναι πολύ ακριβό. Εντάξει, θα πάρω το πρώτο. Μάλιστα, ορίστε. Ποιο περιδέρεο θα αγοράσει? Ένας άντρας ψάχνει ένα δώρο γενεθλίων για τη γυναίκα του σε ένα κοσμήματοπολείο. Ποιο περιδέρεο θα αγοράσει? Μπορώ να σας εξυπηρετήσω. Ψάχνω ένα δώρο γενεθλίων για τη γυναίκα μου. Τι προτείνετε? Λοιπόν, τι λέτε για αυτό το περιδέρεο? Μ, mm, φαίνεται λίγο μακρύ. Αυτά εδώ έχουμε ένα μενταγιόν λουλούδι και ένα άλλο με μια καρδιά. Ψάχνω για κάτι λίγο πιο εκλεπτισμένο. Πόσο κάνει αυτό εδώ το κολλιέ από πέρλες? Είναι στα 500 ευρώ. Μ, mm. Αυτό είναι πολύ ακριβό. Εντάξει, θα πάρω το πρώτο. Μάλιστα, ορίστε. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Γεια σας, είμαι η Στεφανία. Τα Θεοφάνια ή αλλιώς τα Φώτα είναι μια χριστιανική εορτή που γιορτάζεται κάθε χρόνο στις 6 Ιανουαρίου η ανάμεση της βάπτισης του Ιησού Χριστού από τον Άγιο Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή στον Ιορδάνη Ποταμό. Είναι η τρίτη και η τελευταία εορτή του 12ημέρου, της περίοδου δηλαδή από τα Χριστούγεννα ως τα Θεοφάνια. Λέγεται 12ημέρο επειδή διαρκεί 12 ημέρες. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώς ακριβώς γιορτάζονται τα Θεοφάνια στην Ελλάδα. Η σύνθετη λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξεις. Μήπως γνωρίζετε ποιες είναι αυτές? Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Σύμφωνα με τις γραφές, κάποια ημέρα ο Ιησούς παρουσιάστηκε στον Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή, που κήρυτα και βάπτιζε στον Ιορδάνη ποταμό, ζητώντας του να βαπτιστεί. Κατά τη στιγμή της βάπτισης, κατέβηκε από τον ουρανό το Άγιο Πνεύμα, υπομορφή περιστερά. Στάθηκε πάνω από τον Ιησού, ενώ ταυτόχρονα ακούστηκε η φωνή του Θεού από τον ουρανό. Φανερώθηκε έτσι στη γη η Αγία Τριάδα. Πάνω σε αυτό το γεγονός καθιερώθηκε από την Εκκλησία το μυστήριο του βαπτίσματος με την χρήση νερού. Την ημέρα των Θεοφανίων, στις παραθαλάσσιες περιοχές της Ελλάδας, τελείται το έθιμο του αγιασμού των υδάτων, κάτι που θυμίζει την βάπτιση του Ιησού. Κατά την τελετή, που λέγεται και απλά αγιασμό, καταγιάζονται τα ύδατα με ευχέ και επικλήσει του ιερέα, καθώ και με την εμβάπτιση του τιμίου σταυρού στα νερά. Σε περιοχέ μη παραθαλάσσιε, η τελετή μπορεί να γίνει σε ποτάμι, λίμνη ή και σε δεξαμενή νερού. Αγιασμοί τελούνται επίση σε σπίτια, όπου ο ιερέα, με ένα κλαδί βασιλικού, ραντίζει το σπίτι με το αγιασμένο νερό. Κατά την εμβάπτιση του τιμίου σταυρού σε θάλασσα, ποτάμι, λίμνη ή δεξαμενή, Τολμηροί κολυμβητέ ή αλλιώ βουτυχτάδε βουτούν στα παγωμένα νερά για να τον ανασύρουν. Όποιο πιάσει τον σταυρό, αφού πρώτα τον φυλίσει, τον περιφέρει στι οικίε και λαμβάνει πλούσια δώρα. Στην ελληνική ταινία Μανταλένα, που γυρίστηκε στην Αντίπαρο το 1960, γίνεται μια χαρακτηριστική απόδοση του εθίμου αυτού, αν και ο λίγον κομικοτραγική. Άλλα έθιμα των Θεοφανίων είναι τα κάλαντα των φώτων, που λένε τα παιδιά την παραμονή τη εορτή και το πλήσιμο των εικόνων. Θυμάστε τους καλικάτζαρους, τους δαίμονες που ανεβαίνουν στη γη την παραμονή των Χριστουγέννων. 
Με του αγιασμού των Θεοφανίων φοβούνται, τρέπονται σε φυγή και επιστρέφουν ξανά στην υπόγεια κρυψώνα του, όπου και παραμένουν μέχρι την επόμενη παραμονή Χριστουγέννων. Και τώρα θα σα δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Η σύνθετη λέξη Θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξει. Μήπω γνωρίζετε ποιε είναι αυτέ. Η λέξη Θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από τη λέξη Θεό και από το αρχαίο ρήμα Φένο που σημαίνει φανερών. Η γιορτή ονομάζεται έτσι επειδή, όπω είδαμε, ο Θεό φανερώθηκε στη γη. Λέξει όπω φαίνομαι, φαινόμενο, φαντασία, φάντασμα, φανάρι παράγονται από το ρήμα Φένο. Πώς σας φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό? Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον? Εσείς έχετε δει ποτέ ζωντανά ή σε βίντεο την τελετή αγιασμού των υδάτων? Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! You're gonna learn some Hebrew words. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. And our theme today is clothing actions. Actions that has to do with clothing. Okay, let's start. Lilbosh, to put on. So, Lilbosh, it's to put on or to wear. Mata mitkaven Lilbosh la mesiba ha'erev. What are you going to wear for the party tonight? Letaken, to mend. החצאית שלי נקרעה, אז אני צריכה לתקן אותה. My skirt got ripped, so I need to mend it. לכבס, to wash. This word לכבס means to wash only clothes. לכבס, clothes, you can't. לכבס, anything else. מכיוון ששפכתי מיץ על החולצה, הייתי צריכה לכבס אותה. Since I spilled juice on the shirt, I had to wash it. למדוד. To try on. Limdod means uh, literally to measure, uh, but you can also use it uh, to say trying on clothes. Nichnasti letaha halbasha kedei limdod et amichnasaim. I went into the changing room to try on the trousers. Lehatim, to go with. So matim is also suitable or fit, like, properly. So you can say, Does this shirt fit me? The necklace uh, goes with the shirt. Oh, this is the end. I'm so happy because I'm so hot. So this is the end. Thank you so much for watching. We were talking about clothing actions. So don't forget to check out the site and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, Mike! Hello, everybody! Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about 20 travel phrases you should know. Let's get started. Could I get a map? Could I get a map? Could I get a map? Obviously, you can hear the closeness between the word map and mapa, and I think probably the origin is like Greek or something like that, and it just, you know, found its way into all the different languages. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Well, obviously, if somebody speaks English, he can answer you that question even if you ask it in English. יש אוטובוס משדה התעופה לעיר? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? יש אוטובוס משדה התעופה לעיר? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Yeah, that's always very useful. I suggest you ask this question, like, at the information center inside the airport and not just go outside and start asking people because most people have their own arrangements of getting to their own places and, you know, just... Talk to people who know stuff, you know. Yes, internet al khuti bechinam. Is there free Wi-Fi? Yes, internet al khuti bechinam. Is there free Wi-Fi? Now this is a question that I can relate to. If you want to ask, like, what's the Wi-Fi password in Israel, then you should ask. Ma hasisma la Wi-Fi? 
If you say Wi-Fi, people know what that is. Um, so just ask, Ma ha-sisma? Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Yesh lachem chadarim pnuim alayla? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Girl, if you didn't pre-order your rooms in advance, like, I don't know, I don't, I can't even, I don't know what to tell you. Okay? Just, what ifs. אני יכול לעבור לחדר אחר? Could I move to a different room? אני יכול לעבור לחדר אחר? Could I move to a different room? I don't normally do this unless the room is really bad or it smells. That happened to me before, like when the room just smells out of... out of nowhere. הזמנתי מקום. I have a reservation. הזמנתי מקום. I have a reservation. So this one you can use in both restaurants or hotels or, you know, whenever you make a reservation to. Sometimes it could even be a bus. So that's really useful. אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? אפשר לקבל תפריט בבקשה? Could we have the menu, please? Yeah, sometimes they just forget. Like they sit, they sit you down, you're at the table. Sometimes they'll even give you water and no menu. So that's kind of funny. יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? יש לך המלצות? Do you have any recommendations? So, I think, like, in Israel, generally, if you ask the waiter if he has recommendations, then he will tell you what he personally likes. Um, whereas in other places, they would like, oh, do you have recommendations? And they'll tell you, yeah, this and this is very popular. So, I don't know what you guys prefer, but I kind of prefer the waiter's own preference because he probably ate all of the dishes in the menu and he knows what up, you know? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? אפשר לקבל את החשבון? Could I have the check? Yeah, or you can just like... And I think that's like an international thing, you know, check please, but you'll be surprised some countries. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. אני אלרגי לבוטנים. I'm allergic to peanuts. That's really important if you're going to restaurants and if you have any sorts of allergies. So you should mention that and you should really make it clear. And funny story, I found out that in Israel, there are much less peanut allergies than any other place in the world because there's a peanut snack that parents just shove to their kids since they're like zero age. And apparently that kind of immunes them towards peanut allergies and it's very rare, so yay. <laughs> מים בבקשה. Water, please. מים בבקשה. Water, please. Yeah, water in restaurants. You should know that it, you're always supposed to get tap water for free, so remember that. כמה זה עולה? How much is this? כמה זה עולה? How much is this? Also, a very useful phrase, you can ask that when you're doing shopping and clothes and like when you're buying tickets for something. So, useful. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. I'd like ten of these. אני רוצה עשרה כאלה. I'd like ten of these. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought ten of anything. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. אני רוצה את זה. I'd like this. So out of all the things, this is the thing you want. And you should emphasize, when you say that, you should emphasize the word זה, it, this. אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? אתה יכול לתת לי הנחה? Could you give me a discount? Now this one you should always say with a smile on your face. And another way of saying it in Hebrew, which is a little bit more common and a little bit more casual, is instead of, instead of the verb לתת, to give, use the verb לעשות, to do. אתה יכול לעשות לי הנחה? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit card? אתם מקבלים כרטיסי אשראי? Do you take credit cards? Again, usually yes. Um, another very useful thing to ask with credit cards is if you can put, like, the tip in a restaurant, if you can put that on the credit card as well. And when you want to ask that, you'd say, אפשר טיפ באשראי? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? איפה תחנת הרכבת? Where is the train station? I feel like this sentence is more useful in places when you have, like, 
an underground train, uh, whereas in Israel you have like a train that goes between cities, but sometimes you need to take that to the airport, so it's good to ask. Slicha? Kama ola nesia? Excuse me, what's the fare? Slicha? Kama ola nesia? Excuse me, what's the fare? I guess you'd ask that probably only on a bus in Israel and not in any other place. Ata yechol etzalem oti bevakasha? Could you take a picture of me, please? Ata yechol etzalem oti bevakasha? Could you take a picture of me, please? Yeah, so if you're not that much into selfies or you'd want to get a more panoramic or a wide view of what's behind you, then ask somebody. Don't be shy. Okay, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching Hebrew Top Words. We spoke about 20 travel phrases that you should know. Please let me know down below if there's anything else that you want to know and what do you commonly use and if you have a funny story for when you were abroad. I'd love to read all of your comments. Don't forget to like up this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out HebrewPod101.com for more content, more videos, and more Hebrew. I'll see you next time. Bye. Shalom. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, what's the difference between the Nikud Kamatz and Patach, and between Tzere and Segol? To understand this, it's important to know that vowels in Hebrew were traditionally of three lengths. Some vowels were long, some short, and some super short. Kamatz and Patach both represent an A sound, but Kamatz is long while Patach is short. Here are a few examples. Shalom, Kal. Some words have both Kamatz and Patach. Katav, Ganav, Matza. Similarly, Tzere is the long version of the E sound while Segol is the short version. Here are a few examples. Lev, Etz, Moed, Melech, Carmel. In the past, knowing the difference between these sounds was crucial to speaking and understanding proper Hebrew. But in contemporary Hebrew, there is no difference at all. That's right, they all sound exactly the same. How do you know then which one to use? Since they have no impact on pronunciation, the only real way to learn the proper spelling and use of the Nikud is simply by memorizing it. As you study Hebrew, you may start to recognize patterns that make this easier, but on the whole, there are no shortcuts. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! I didn't see you there. Hello, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words with me, Yara. <laughs> and uh, today's theme is, oh, in your wallet. Uh, that's gonna be a short one. So, uh, wallet in Hebrew is arnak, arnak. Here is my arnak. And okay, let's see uh, what is the first word. רישיון נהיגה, driver's license. קיבלתי את רישיון הנהיגה שלי כשהייתי בת 17. I got my driver's license when I was 17 years old. כרטיס אשראי, credit card. הגזמתי עם הקניות החודש, אז גזרו לי את כרטיס האשראי. I went too far with the shopping this month, so they had to cut my credit card. קופון, קופון. I'm not very good at collecting them, but I know people that live off coupons. Like, they only buy with coupons. Yes, li kuponim beshovi elef shkalim. 
I have a thousand shekel worth of coupons. Mezuman, cash. Uh, the full term is kesef mezuman, cash money. Slicha, anachnu mekablim rak kesef mezuman. I'm sorry, we only accept cash. Kartis bikur, business card. Kartis bikur, business card. The card you give to someone you meet. Uh, it can be uh, a person's card, it can be a business card. Business card. אפשר לקבל את כרטיס הביקור שלכם בבקשה? Can I have your business card, please? Why, of course. Here is my business card. And this is the end. We were talking about things that you have in your wallet. ארנק. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the website and we'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, now I'm a member. Yeah, and it's for life. Yeah. <laughs>
leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Hi everyone, shalom and welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and I am super excited to find out this week's theme. Okay, drum. And this week's theme is being sick. <laughs> yeah, sounds like fun. Uh, being sick, liot chole. Zihum, infection. I once had uh, an, a ring in my eyebrow. Well, when you're 16, you know. Hayali zihum bagaba. I had an infection in my eyebrow. That's a true story. Kevrosh, headache. I have so many of these, so I'm actually really experienced. I can tell you a lot about it. Lo igati la shiur ki haya li kevrosh. I didn't come to class because I had a headache. True story. Kev beten, stomach ache. Ani choshevet shachalti mashu mekulkal. Yesh li kev beten. I think I ate something bad. I have a stomach ache. Beware. Chom, fever. Chom is actually the word for heat as well. הוא היה בסדר בבוקר, אבל אז עלה לו החום. He was fine in the morning, but then his fever went up. צינון, cold. כשאת סובלת מצינון, את מתעטשת כל הזמן. When you suffer from a cold, you keep sneezing all the time. Uh, so this is the end. Thank you so much for watching. This week's theme was being sick. להיות חולה. I wish you... Only good health, and uh, don't forget to check our site. And see you next week on Hebrew Weekly Words. Bye. Hello, everyone. It is here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about ten phrases to say when you're angry. Let's get started. Zeloin yancha. It's none of your business. Zeloin yancha. It's none of your business. זה לא עניינך. זה לא עניינך. It's none of your business. We all know when we're using that, right? I wouldn't say it to, like, people from work. שתוק. Shut up. שתוק. Shut up. שתוק. שתוק means be quiet, or, you know, it's not really shut up, but it's, like, be quiet. Sometimes you can say to like friends, like, like, be quiet for a second. You can say, like, like, shut up for a minute. But if you really want to be rude, um, which sometimes you do, then you want to say, stom ta pe. Stom ta pe, not et ha pe, because this is too polite. Stom ta pe means, like, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. This is what you want to know. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azovoti. Leave me alone. Azov oti. Uh, most of these phrases are obviously quite short because you don't want to start a lecture when you're angry, right? You just want just to send a message. You just want to be loud and clear. Leave me alone. Azovoti. It can also be physically, like, you know, just like, don't touch me. Like, azovoti. If somebody does touch you, which is wrong. אתה צוחק עליי? Are you kidding me? אתה צוחק עליי? Are you kidding me? אתה צוחק עליי? Um, yeah, it also means like, are you making fun of me kind of a thing. Uh, we usually say it when somebody is saying something that you really can't believe. It doesn't have to be like in an angry way. Like if somebody tells you something and it's really amazing, you say like, you're kidding, right? So you can say, אתה צוחק עליי. It's like, no, no, it's real. <gasps> Can be that kind of a thing. שיהיה. Whatever. שיהיה. Whatever. שיהיה, it's like, let it be. <laughs> uh, but it's not let it be like in a philosophical kind of a Beatles. It's more like, it's whatever. I don't, I don't care. Oh, yeah. You can, you can say to your parents, like, whatever. שיהיה. Or if somebody tells you something and you don't really, like, you don't, you don't even want to argue about it anymore, it's just whatever, okay, just she yeah, she yeah, she yeah. It's more of a teenager thing. Maspik im ze. Cut it out. 
מספיק עם זה. Cut it out. Now this is more of a parent thing, like when you twitch your leg or you're just making noise or, you know, children are being um, annoying. Uh, and you just, you also kind of say it through your teeth. It's like, מספיק עם זה. And the slower you say it, the scarier it is. It's like, the slower it is, you know they mean business. Oh my God, I should really stop. Sorry, mom. It's more of like a stop. Kind of a, you know, enough. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. I mean, if when you're having an argument or something and you just, you know, want to give the silent treatment and somebody tries to, somebody tries to ruin your silent treatment, then you're just like, I don't want to talk to you. אני לא רוצה לדבר איתך. Talk to the hand. אני כועס. I'm upset. אני כועס. I'm upset. I guess it's not too scary. I mean, people are entitled to their emotions, right? So you can say, you can express in simple words that you're upset or angry. That's probably fine. It's what comes after that. <laughs> it's really the bad part, right? It's like, אני כועס. I'm angry. What about? אז מה? So what? אז מה? So what? This is a very Israeli kind of a gesture. And it's like, kind of like, who do you think you are, kind of a thing. Or, you know, who cares? So what? Practice. It's like, it's like screwing a ball, but more like vertical and fast. אז מה is literally just, so what? אז מה? תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. תשמור על הפה שלך. Watch your mouth. I honestly believe that you can have a serious discussion or um, just a really angry discussion without um, using any cuss words, and I'm a strong believer in that, and I try not to because I think I can make my points perfectly clear without it. Um, and if somebody, like especially your child, if somebody is using, using like cuss words against you, you can say like, watch your mouth. And that's a really scary thing to, thing to say, in my opinion, to somebody like, תשמור על הפה שלך. Because there is a famous saying in Hebrew that means that life and death is on the tongue, like you can control life and death just by speaking. And it says, in Hebrew it says, חיים ומוות ביד הלשון. So if somebody tells you to watch your mouth, it means like, oh, this is going to get serious. Okay, everybody, those were 10 phrases to use when you're angry. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything similar in your country, which one is your favorite, and if there's anything that we missed. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways to express your anger, and it's a wonderful emotion, isn't it? So, uh, don't forget to check out HebrewPod 101 for more videos, more content, more Hebrew, and I'll see you next time. Bye, les trot. Ephes Zero Ephes 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 Echad One Echad אחד אחד אחת one אחת 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 שניים two שניים, 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 שתיים, two, שתיים, שתיים, 
שתיים, שלושה, 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 שלוש, 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 ארבעה, four, ארבעה, ארבעה, ארבעה. ארבע, four, ארבע, 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 חמישה, five, חמישה, חמישה. חמישה, חמש, five, חמש, 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 שישה, six, שישה, שישה. שישה, שש, סקס, שש, 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 שבעה, סבן, שבעה, 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 שבע, סבן, שבע, 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 שמונה, אייט, שמונה, 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 אייט, שמונה, 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 תשעה, ניין, תשעה, 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 תשע, ניין, תשע, תשע, תשע. חמישה, חמש, שבעה, שבע, שלושה, שלוש, אפס, אפס,
תשעה. תשע. שניים. שתיים. שישה. שש. ארבעה. ארבע. שמונה. שמונה. אחד. אחת. Oh, oh, I didn't see you there. Hello, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words with me, Yara. <laughs> And uh, today's theme is, oh, in your wallet. Uh, that's going to be a short one. <laughs> so, uh, wallet in Hebrew is arnak. Arnak. Here is my arnak. And okay, let's see uh, what is the first word. רישיון נהיגה, driver's license. קיבלתי את רישיון הנהיגה שלי כשהייתי בת 17. I got my driver's license when I was 17 years old. כרטיס אשראי, credit card. הגזמתי עם הקניות החודש, אז גזרו לי את כרטיס האשראי. I went too far with the shopping this month, so they had to cut my credit card. קופון, קופון. I'm not very good at collecting them, but I know people that live off coupons. Like, they only buy with coupons. יש לי קופונים בשווי אלף שקלים. I have a thousand shekel worth of coupons. מזומן, cash. Uh, the full term is כסף מזומן, cash money. סליחה, אנחנו מקבלים רק כסף מזומן. I'm sorry, we only accept cash. כרטיס ביקור. Business card. כרטיס ביקור, business card, the card you give to someone you meet, uh, it can be uh, a person's card, it can be a business, business card. אפשר לקבל את כרטיס הביקור שלכם בבקשה? Can I have your business card please? Why of course, here is my business card. And this is the end, we were talking about things that you have in your wallet, ארנק. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the website and we'll see you next week. Bye! Oh, now I'm a member, yeah, and it's for life. <laughs>שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. Hello, it's nice to meet you. שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You say this when you're talking to a male. Otherwise, it's שלום, נעים להכיר אותך. אני מישראל. I'm from Israel. אני מישראל. I'm from Israel. You can obviously change that. I'm from Italy would be אני מאיטליה. I'm from America will be אני מאמריקה. אני גרה בירושלים. I live in Jerusalem.
אני גרה בירושלים. I live in Jerusalem. I said the female form. The male form would be אני גר בירושלים. This verb, אני גרה, גר, it doesn't mean to live, like to exist, but to live in a place. So, אני גרה בירושלים. אני לומדת עברית כבר שנה. I've been learning Hebrew for a year. אני לומדת עברית כבר שנה. I've been learning Hebrew for a year. For a male it would be אני לומד עברית כבר שנה. אני בת 27. I'm 27 years old. אני בת 27. I'm 27 years old. For a male, אני בן 27. אני מורה. I'm a teacher. אני מורה. I'm a teacher. Or for a male, אני מורה. You obviously don't have to say that if you're not a teacher. אחד התחביבים שלי הוא קריאה. One of my hobbies is reading. אחד התחביבים שלי הוא קריאה. One of my hobbies is reading. This sentence stays the same for male and for female speaker. אני נהנית להאזין למוזיקה. I enjoy listening to music. אני נהנית להאזין למוזיקה. I enjoy listening to music. For male speaker, אני נהנה להאזין למוזיקה. גדלתי בתל אביב. I grew up in תל אביב. גדלתי בתל אביב. I grew up in תל אביב. This sentence stays the same for a male and for a female speaker. Obviously, if you grew up somewhere else, you can also say, גדלתי בניו יורק. I grew up in New York. Or, גדלתי בפריז. I grew up in Paris. Okay, so these were 10 lines you need for introducing yourself in Hebrew. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. One of my hobbies is really... Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. My name is Yara, and today we're going to learn 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. You think you can? Well, prove it. Start now. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. There actually are a lot of good movies done in Israel in the last, like, 10 years. Obviously more, but if you want to, you know, be updated. A uh, few of my favorite are Jellyfish, which is amazingly good, I think. And another one who was actually nominated for the Academy Awards uh, called Vals im Bashir, Waltz with Bashir, I think. It's a really good movie. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. אני יכולה לשנן בערך 50 מילים חדשות בעברית ביום. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. That's crazy, can you? You say that to me and I will be amazed. Just saying. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. Well, that would only amaze me if you... Don't speak Hebrew at this point, because learning a language for 10 years and not being able to speak it, well, that is amazing. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. That is impressive. How do you do that? With HebrewPod101.com? Well, in Israel, when we're impressed, we have this sound that we make. <laughs> goes Psh. okay so this is what you say when you're impressed all by yourself Psh. i am amazed you know what amazed i understood everything you said 
That's a funny one. הבנתי את כל מה שאמרת. I understood everything you said. I hope you understand everything I say. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here talking to myself. But you know what? Props to you. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, that's just bragging. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, you don't need to brag, okay? I only have two. How many languages can you speak? Leave a comment below. Make us jealous. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. Well, I am amazed by that because, as you probably already know, Hebrew is a difficult language to learn, but I think it's doable. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. I would be happy if you think that. <laughs> yeah, do you agree? Is Hebrew fun and easy to learn? Hope it is. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. You're not a native speaker? then psh, you're really good. One that would really amaze me will be Lamanti et kol ze et mol. I learned all of that yesterday. Psh, must have been a busy day. Okay, thank you so much for watching 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Now go out there and amaze some native speakers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about must-know particles for Hebrew learners, prepositions, and conjunctions. Let's do it. El, tu, el, tu. Ani holech el chavera sheli baregel. I'm walking to my friend. So we use el as tu. But we use it usually when you're going to see people um, or people's houses and not for like just random places like school or the post office. So when we use a particular name, we can use either el or le, um, which is what we'll also use for um, places. Me. From. Me. From. אני חוזר מירושלים מחר בבוקר. I'm coming back from Jerusalem tomorrow morning. So me is much more simple. It has no variations. And it's just always when you use from, you use me. So here is another example. And I want you to please notice that sometimes when we say me, it kind of sounds like me. But the meaning is the same. For instance, Ani mi Tel Aviv. I am from Tel Aviv. Im, with. Im, with. Hayeled holech im hakelev letayel. The child is walking with the dog. Im in the letter Ein always means with. Um, oftentimes, even Hebrew speakers sometimes confuse im with ein, with the letter ein, which is with, with im in an aleph, which means if. Um, so please do your best not to get confused. I'll give you another example for im with. Ani holechet im hachaver sheli. לסרט. I am going with my boyfriend to a movie. בלי. without. 
בלי, without. אני לא יכולה לרקוד בלי הנעליים שלי. I can't dance without my shoes. So the word בלי always means without. I can give you a very common example of the usage of the word בלי, which is kind of um, a saying. ללכת עם, להרגיש בלי. That means going with and feeling without. It has many uses and not only for commercials. V. And. V. And. חבריי הטובים הם דוד ואבנר. My best friends are דוד and אבנר. V is extremely common, probably the most common of all the prepositions. And I remember I asked a friend once, how does Hebrew sound to them? Like, if he doesn't understand Hebrew and, I'm, and I talk Hebrew, what, is he, what does it sound like? And he said it sounds a lot like just V, 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 V. So it's very common. Ki. Because. Ki. Because. העכבר ברח כי הוא ראה את החתול. The mouse ran away because it saw the cat. כי is a very short word to say because, and it's very convenient. Um, so I hope you're going to use it a lot. And also it sounds a little bit like the word כי, spelled כוף יוד אלף. But כוף יוד אלף means vomit. Don't confuse the two. בשביל, for. בשביל, for. הפרח הזה בשביל אמא שלי. This flower is for my mom. That's so cute. או, oh. or, או, oh. or. אפשר לטוס לרומא או למילאנו. I can fly to Rome or Milan. או and or are very similar, so I don't see any excuse to forget it. אבל, but, אבל, but. אני רוצה לאכול, אבל לא משהו מטוגן. I want to eat, but not anything fried. Of course I want to eat something fried. <laughs> um, so the word aval means but. Um, again, extremely common. And it spells the same as some other words, but it doesn't sound the same. So when you're talking, you're not going to get confused. So aval is spelled the same way as the word for morning, which is kind of bad. But it doesn't, you don't say it the same way. אבל או אבל, it's not the same, so you're not going to get confused when you're having a conversation. עד, until, עד, until. אני אלמד עד שש. I will study until six. עד means until or up to. Um, kind of the same meaning. Okay, everybody, that's it. Those were must-know particles in Hebrew. Let me know in the comments below if there are any things that I forgot, if there are any particles that you want to know what it is. And yeah, don't forget to check out HebrewPod 101 for more content, more Hebrew. Like up this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. 
You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Tzchok Laugh Tzchok Tzchok Laugh Litzchok mit Muna Laugh at a picture Litzchok mit Muna Taim Delicious Taim Taim Delicious Zenir e Taim It looks delicious Ze Nir e Taim Maim Water Maim Maim Water Haisha Shota Maim The woman is drinking water Haisha Shota Maim Te T Te Te T Haisha Shota Te The woman is drinking tea Haisha Shota Te Cafe Coffee Cafe Cafe Coffee Cos Cafe Cup of Coffee Cos Cafe Beer. 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 Bakbuk beer. Bottle of beer. Bakbuk beer. Yain Wine Yain Yain Wine Yain Nimzag Letocha Kos Wine is being poured into the glass. Yain Nimzag Letoch Hakos Basar Bakar Beef Basar Bakar Basar Bakar Beef Bakar Lamanaha Ikarit Beef for the main course. Bakar Lamana Haikarit Of Chicken Of Of Chicken Haish Hotech Of 
The man is cutting chicken. Ha'ish chotech of besar chazir pork besar chazir besar chazir pork besar levan hu besar chazir pork is the meat from a pig. Basar lavan hu besar chazir. Dag. Fish. Dag. Dag. Fish. Japanim ochlim harbe dagim. Japanese people eat a lot of fish. Japanim ochlim harbe dagim. Kevis. Lamb. Kevis. Kevis. Lamb. Besar keves ze ta'im nora. Lamb is extremely delicious. Besar keves ze ta'im nora. Rofe. Doctor. Rofe. Rofe. Doctor. Ani rofe. I am a doctor. Ani rofe. Shoter. Police officer. Shoter. Shoter. Police officer. Shoter be madin. Police officer in uniform. Shoter be madin. Mora. Teacher. Mora. Mora. Teacher. Mora bekita. Teacher in a classroom. Mora bekita. Oved. Employee. Oved. O. V. D. Employee. Hatavot leovdim. Employee benefits. Hatavot leovdim. Lavo. Come. Lavo. Lavo. Kam. Lavo mukdam. Kam early. Lavo mukdam. Lirot. Si. Lirot. Lir ot. Si. Er e ha tzaga biyom rishon. I'll see a play on Sunday. Er e ha tzaga biyom rishon. 
להכין. make. להכין. להכין. make. השף מכין מיץ תפוזים. The chef is making orange juice. השף מכין מיץ תפוזים. השתמש. Use. השתמש. השתמש. Use. השתמשו במצלמת אינטרנט. Use a webcam. השתמשו במצלמת אינטרנט. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning Hebrew. That's right. And we're here to help guide you through your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning Hebrew and how to get started. Let's begin with the most obvious question. Why learn a new language? There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never have even considered going. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language can help you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory, as opposed to those who didn't. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Hebrew in particular? Well, do you know the Bible? That was written in Hebrew. One of the best reasons for learning Hebrew is to gain access to ancient texts in their original language. The Old Testament of the Bible was written in Biblical Hebrew. By learning modern Hebrew, you can begin to understand what the original writers intended in these complex texts. These ancient words take on new meaning when you know the word in Hebrew. Speaking of history, modern Hebrew made history when it became a spoken language after 2,000 years of only being used for prayer and in religious texts. That's right. Hebrew is unique in this way. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a man called Eliezer ben Yehuda worked hard to revive Hebrew as a spoken language. By learning Hebrew, you can be a part of this unique movement of history. Today, Israel is a leader in the area of high-tech industry. And this means there are many jobs and business opportunities in tech in Israel. Although most Israelis speak English, learning Hebrew will help you communicate in an effective way with Israelis. There are many times knowing the language and culture of Israel will give you an advantage when making a business deal or finding work in Israel. Another reason to learn Hebrew is to better understand politics in the region. There is quite a lot going on in the Middle East right now. 
learning Hebrew will help you understand Israeli politics and perspective. You'll be able to read Israeli newspapers and watch Israeli news and learn about this intense region in a new way. There are so many reasons to learn Hebrew. Okay then, we've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Hebrew, but how should they get started, Edith? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Hebrew and building up from there. The good news is that you already know some Hebrew. Hallelujah. Chutzpah. Chumus. These are words that have made their way into English, but the reverse is also true. Many English words have also made their way into Hebrew. In fact, for many modern technologies, like telephone or television, the word most often used in Hebrew is derived from English. Telephone, Televisia, Autobus. So there are many words you already know in Hebrew. Let's teach you something that you might not know, but is very useful. Toda. It means thank you in Hebrew. That's a useful phrase. Can you tell us more about these characters, though? Sure. In Hebrew, you use the Hebrew alphabet. Once you learn the letters and their sounds, it's actually pretty easy to read. Most letters in Hebrew represent a consonant sound, but we also use a system of dots to represent vowels. These vowel dots are called mikud. When you're learning to read, you read texts with the vowel dots. As you get better, you read the letters without the dots. Isn't that a little confusing? No, it's actually easier than it looks. Hebrew is a systematic language, and the vowel sounds will be clear from the structure of the word. This is toda with the vowel dots, toda. And this is toda without the vowel dots, toda. You'll learn the Hebrew writing system eventually, but for now, let's put up some romanization to help you get started. The romanization will make it easier for you to learn Hebrew until you learn to read the letters yourself. That certainly makes things much easier to learn. Well, okay then. Now listen and repeat after eat it. Toda. Now you try. Toda. Your turn again. Toda. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Hebrew. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap what we've learned. In this lesson, you learn that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. The Hebrew language has a unique history, and learning Hebrew will open up a new aspect of history for you. And to say thank you in Hebrew, it's... Toda. In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Hebrew pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds of Hebrew, so be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, shalom. My name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So, uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies. Hobbies. Tachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson. Chess lesson. כשאני הייתי בבית הספר היסודי, היה לי שיעור שחמט. Yeah, that didn't go very well for me. Never won. לאסוף בולים, to collect stamps. לאסוף בולים, my father had a stamp collection. אבא שלי אסף בולים. Uh, then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it, so. לגלוש באינטרנט, to surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. אתה גולש באינטרנט יותר מדי. לשחק פוקר. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. הלכתי לחבר שלי לשחק פוקר. I actually never played poker. I don't even know how to do that. צילום. Photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I never did that, so kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site, and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot.
I feel I lost my personality. Hello everyone, Edie here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about happy words. Yay! Sameach. Happy. Sameach. Happy. Mi shetov lo vesameach kafimcha. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So obviously there's also a Hebrew translation to this song. And I remember it from kindergarten and I didn't even know that it was in English originally. Um, I guess I found out somehow, but yeah, you know, I think they have it in like every language. Mi shetov lo vesameach kafimcha. Yefeife. Beautiful. Yefeife. Beautiful. Their apartment is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, the word yefefe, beautiful, comes from the word yefe, pretty. It's so pretty that you have to repeat the word twice. Like, is it yefe? No, it's yefefe. Lehov, to love. Lehov, to love. Ani ohev shokolad. Vilgot gvina. I love chocolate and cheesecakes. This example sentence is also from like a Hebrew song for kids, and it's a very famous song about a kid who sings about all the things that he loves, and he's saying, Ani ohev shokolad, vilgot gvina. He loves chocolate and cheesecakes, and he loves food, and he loves his sister and his mom and his dad, but most of all. He loves himself. Nehedar, <laughs> great. Nehedar, great. Echa ya seret? Oi, hu aya pashut nehedar. How was the movie? Oh, it was simply wonderful. Nehedar can be great, it can be wonderful, um, it can be magnificent. And it comes from the word hadar, which means glamour. Nehedar, magnificent. Nimratz, lively. Nimratz, lively. Yesh lanu echad wa misrad, vu kol azman kol kach nimratz. We have a guy at our office, and he's always so lively. We all know that one guy, right? <laughs> Adiv, kind. Adiv, kind. It's important to be kind to one another. You know, like on the bus, if you see a pregnant lady or an older man, like, and they're standing up and you're sitting down, just stand up for them, let, have, let them have a seat. That's a very kind thing to do. Um, and it's very adiv. Matzchik. Funny. Matzchik. Funny. Oh, you're a great guy. You're a great guy. Oh, you're going to love that guy. He's so funny. I know that sounds like a euphemism, <laughs> but it's not. Just, you know, funny is, is funny. Um, I think some people now nowadays, like, they use, oh, you're so funny. When they say that in Hebrew, at kazot matzchika. Like, oh, I think you're confusing. Oh, I think you're mistaken. In, like, a, a little bit of a passive-aggressive way. But I think 98% of... You know, when people use that word, it's just mean, you know, funny. <laughs> Adir, awesome. Adir, awesome. Reita et aplikatia shet kanti? I pashut adira. Did you see the app that I installed? It's just awesome. So this is more of like a slang word when you say about something, Adir, it's like, ah, oh, it was great, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Adir. Nifla, fantastic. Nifla, fantastic. Achalnu kinuach nifla b'misada. We had a fantastic dessert at the restaurant. So nifla is a less of a slangish way of saying like the same thing, but it's a bit more, you know, kind of like upscale, a bit more respectful. Fantastic. Nifla. Lehitgalgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Lehit galgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Haiti be stand up at mall, 
ופשוט התגלגלתי מצחוק. I was at a stand-up comedy yesterday and I just rolled on the floor laughing. So this phrase in English, usually people use it like online and they write R-O-F-L, like ruffle, and it's like meaning, oh yeah, I'm, I'm like rolling on the floor laughing right now. But in Hebrew, you also kind of use it when you're actually talking to somebody face to face. It's not just like an internet kind of a, a meme phrase. It's just something that actually happens, like you're just rolling on the floor. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining me today for Hebrew Top Words. This week we talked about happy words, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me your favorite happy words in Hebrew or in English in the comments below. Don't forget to like up this video and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Shalom. My name is Yara, and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies, hobbies, tachbivim, what are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmak, to play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson, chess lesson. Kshani aiti bebet sefer esodi, hayali shiur shachmak. Yeah, that didn't go very well for me. Never won. Lesof gulim, to collect stamps. Lesof gulim. My father had a stamp collection. Abba Shali Asaf Bulim. And then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. So, Liglosh by internet. To surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. Ata golesh by internet, you tell me die. Lesachek poker. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker, and this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. I actually never played poker, I don't even know how to do that. Silum, photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. I never did that, so kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot. I feel I lost my personality. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi, everybody. My name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Yad. Hand. Yad. Yad. Hand. Yad small. Left hand, yad, small, zroa, arm, zroa, zroa, arm. שתי הזרועות מורמות מעלה. The two arms are raised. שתי הזרועות מורמות מעלה. כף רגל. 
foot. Kaf regel. Kaf regel. Foot. Bechaf regel yesh chamesh behonot. A foot has five toes. Bechaf regel yesh chamesh behonot. Regel. Leg. Regel. Regel. Leg. Raglaim arukot. Long legs. Raglaim arukot. Etzba. Finger. Etzba. Etzba. Finger. Haetzba lechutsa el hazchuchit. The finger is pressed against the glass. Haetzba lechutsa el Gav. Back. Gav. Gav. Back. Hagav sheli koev. My back hurts. Hagav sheli koev. Beten. Stomach. Beten. Beten. Stomach. Yesh li kev beten. I have a stomach ache. Yesh li kev beten. Chaze. Chest. Chaze. Kha ze Chest Yesh li kevim bachaze I have chest pains Yesh li kevim bachaze Januar January Januar. Ya nu ar. January. Be januar karkan me od. It's very cold here in January. Be januar karkan me od. Februar. February. 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 February הוא החודש הקצר ביותר עם 28 ימים. February is the shortest month with 28 days. February הוא החודש הקצר ביותר עם עשרים ושמונה ימים. מרץ 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 אפריל עכשיו אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. It is now April, so last month was March. 
אפריל עכשיו, אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. אפריל. April. 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 גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. April showers bring May flowers. גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. מאי. מי. מאי. מאי. מי. השלושים ואחד במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. May 31st is World No Smoking Day. השלושים ואחד במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. יוני, ג'ון. יוני, יוני. ג'ון. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. We are getting married in June. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. יולי. July. יולי. יו. לי. July. יולי נקרא על שמו של יוליוס קיסר שנולד ביולי. July is named for Julius Caesar who was born in July. יולי נקרא על שמו של יוליוס קיסר שנולד ביולי. אוגוסט. 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 בית הספר סגור באוגוסט. The school is closed in August. בית הספר סגור באוגוסט. ספטמבר. 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 בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. In September, falls begins in the northern hemisphere, and spring in the southern hemisphere. בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. אוקטובר. 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 ליל כל הקדושים חל ב-31 באוקטובר. Halloween falls on October 31st. ליל כל הקדושים חל ב-31 באוקטובר. 
November. 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 No vem ber. November. Chag ha-hodaya, yom chamishi, ha-esrem ve-arbaa, b-november. Thanksgiving, Thursday, November 24th. Chag ha-hodaya, yom chamishi, ha-esrem ve-arbaa, b-november. December. 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 Hashloshim vechad be December, hu erev rosh hashana. December 31st is New Year's Eve. Hashloshim vechad. בדצמבר הוא ערב ראש השנה. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi, everyone. Shalom. Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, my name is Yara, and this week's theme is fruits. Perot. Uh, single is pri. So, fruits. Exciting. Yay. Tapuach. Apple. Green apples are my favorite. תפוחים ירוקים הם התפוחים האהובים עליי. אבטיח, watermelon. אבטיח, ה-plural uh, is אבטיחים. Mm, ביפן יש אבטיחים מרובעים. Japan has square watermelons. It's true, Google it. תאנה, fig. I actually love figs. Uh, I have a friend who can't eat them because she says that their insides look like worms. Sorry, that's a picture you won't be able to get out of your head. Lesavta sheli haya et tena. My grandmother had a fig tree. Mishmesh, apricot. The word is mishmesh, but Israelis usually say mishmish. Kaniti bashuk kilo mishmishim. I bought one kilo of apricots in the market. Dubdevan, cherry. This event was the cherry on my cream. Hayru aze haya dubdevan shebakatsefet. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Hebrew Weekly Words. We talked about fruits, perot. So don't forget to check our website and see you next week. Bye. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts, one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first, and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school. So most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without mikud. And here it is with mikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. 
without Nikud, it's, and with Nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with Nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use Nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud, Ein. For example, the letter Hey often ends a word with an A or an E sound, like in the words Laila for night and Bonet, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit. Mem, mem sofit. Nun, nun sofit. Pe, pe sofit. Tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here is an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word. Mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and v. In the word bama, or stage, it makes a b sound, and in the word for dog, or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound. And in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pe is both p and f. In the word Papa or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book or sefer, it's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf, Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, and chuva, meaning answer, begin with two different letters of the alphabet. But you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one. Bet represents the number two and so on. When you get to the number 10, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent 11 through 19. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first 10 letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew, printed script and written script. Hebrew is written in red from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters.
And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. If you want to learn more, check out our Learn Hebrew Writing video series. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Hebrew Boot Camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Hebrew right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. Today we're going to talk about happy words. Yay! Sameach, happy. Sameach, happy. Misha tovlo v'sameach kafimcha. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So obviously there's also a Hebrew translation to this song, and I remember it from kindergarten, and I didn't even know that it was in English originally. Um, I guess I found out somehow, but yeah, you know, I think they have it in like every language. Mishetov loves sameach kafimcha. Yefefe, beautiful. Yefefe, beautiful. Hadira shalem pashut yefefia. Their apartment is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, the word yefefe, beautiful, comes from the word yefe, pretty. It's so pretty that you have to repeat the word twice. Like, is it yafe? No, it's yafefe. Lehov, to love. Lehov, to love. Ani ohev shokolad veugot gvina. I love chocolate and cheesecakes. This example sentence is also from like a Hebrew song for kids. And it's a very famous song about a kid who sings about all the things that he loves. And he's saying, Ani ohev shokolad veugot gvina. He loves chocolate and cheesecakes and he loves food and he loves his sister and his mom and his dad. But most of all, he loves himself. Nehedar, <laughs> great. Nehedar, great. Echaya seret. Oy, hu haya pashut nehedar. How was the movie? Oh, it was simply wonderful. Nehedar can be great, it can be wonderful, um, it can be magnificent. And it comes from the word hadar, which means glamour. Nehedar, magnificent. Nimratz, lively. Nimratz, lively. יש לנו אחד במשרד, והוא כל הזמן כל כך נמרץ. We have a guy at our office, and he's always so lively. We all know that one guy, right? אדיב, kind. אדיב, kind. חשוב להיות אדיבים לזולת. It's important to be kind to one another. You know, like on the bus, if you see a pregnant lady or an older man, like, and they're standing up and you're sitting down, just stand up for them, let, have, let them have a seat. That's a very kind thing to do. Um, and it's very adiv. Metzchik. Funny. Metzchik. Funny. Oh, you're going to love that guy. He's so funny. I know that sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> But it's not, just, you know, funny is, is funny. Um, I think some people now, nowadays, like, they use, oh, you're so funny, when they say that in Hebrew, at kazot matzchika. Like, oh, I think you're confusing, or I think you're mistaken, in, like, a, a little bit of a passive-aggressive way. But I think 98% of, you know, when people use that word, it's just mean, you know, funny. <laughs> Adir. Awesome. Adir. Awesome. Raita et aplikatia shet kanti? I pashut adira. Did you see the app that I installed? It's just awesome. So this is more of like a slang word when you say about something, adir, it's like, ah, oh, it was great, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Adir. Nifla. Fantastic. Nifla. Fantastic. We had a fantastic dessert at the restaurant. So, nifla 
is a less of a slangish way of saying like the same thing, but it's a bit more, you know, kind of like upscale, a bit more respectful. Fantastic. Nifla. Lehitgalgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Lehitgalgel mitzchok. Rolling on the floor laughing. Hayiti be stand up at mall, ve pashut itgalgalti mitzchok. I was at a stand-up comedy yesterday, and I just rolled on the floor laughing. So this phrase in English, usually people use it like online, and they write R-O-F-L, like ruffle, and it's like meaning, oh yeah, I'm, I'm like rolling on the floor laughing right now. But in Hebrew, you also kind of use it when you're actually talking to somebody face to face. It's not just like an internet kind of a... A meme phrase it's just something that actually happens like you're just rolling on the floor okay so thank you everyone for joining me today for Hebrew top words this week we talked about happy words and I hope you enjoyed it please tell me your favorite happy words in Hebrew or in English in the comments below don't forget to like up this video and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video thank you bye bye Hi everyone, Shalom, my name is Yara and this is Hebrew Weekly Words. So, uh, I actually don't know what this week's theme is, so let's find out together. This week's theme is... Hobbies. Hobbies. Kachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson. Chess lesson. כשאני הייתי בבית הספר היסודי, היה לי שיעור שחמט. Yeah, that didn't go very well for me. Never won. לאסוף בולים, to collect stamps. לאסוף בולים, my father had a stamp collection. אבא שלי אסף בולים. Uh, then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. לגלוש so. באינטרנט, <laughs> to surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. אתה גולש באינטרנט יותר מדי. לשחק פוקר. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. הלכתי לחבר שלי לשחק פוקר. I actually never played poker. I don't even know how to do that. צילום. Photography. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I never did that, so it's kind of lazy. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching Hebrew Weekly Words. Uh, don't forget to check our site, and I'll see you next week. Bye, Litraot. I feel I lost my personality. In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Yad. Hand. Yad. Ya d. Hand. Yad small. Left hand. Yad small. Zroa. Arm. Zroa. Zroa. 
arm. שתי הזרועות מורמות מעלה. The two arms are raised. שתי הזרועות מורמות מעלה. כף רגל. foot. כף רגל. כף רגל. foot. בכף רגל יש חמש בהונות. A foot has five toes. בכף רגל יש חמש בהונות. רגל. leg. רגל. רגל. leg. רגליים ארוכות. long legs. רגליים ארוכות. אצבע. finger. אצבע. אצבע. finger. האצבע לחוצה אל הזכוכית. The finger is pressed against the glass. האצבע לחוצה אל הזכוכית. גב. Back. גב. גב. Back. הגב שלי כואב. My back hurts. הגב שלי כואב. בטן. סטמק. בטן. בטן. סטמק. יש לי כאב בטן. I have a stomach ache. יש לי כאב בטן. חזה. Chest. חזה. חזה. Chest. יש לי כאבים בחזה. I have chest pains. יש לי כאבים בחזה. ינואר. January. ינואר. יא-נו-אר. January. בינואר קר כאן מאוד. It's very cold here in January. בינואר קר כאן מאוד. פברואר. February. פברואר. פברואר. February. פברואר הוא החודש הקצר ביותר, עם 28 ימים. February is the shortest month with 28 days. פברואר הוא החודש הקצר ביותר, עם 28 ימים. מרץ, מרץ, 
מרץ. 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 אפריל עכשיו, אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. It is now April, so last month was March. אפריל עכשיו, אז החודש הקודם היה מרץ. אפריל. April. אפריל. אפריל. April. גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. April showers bring May flowers. גשמי אפריל מביאים פרחים במאי. מאי. מי. מאי. מאי. מי. ה-31 במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. May 31st is World No Smoking Day. ה-31 במאי הוא היום הבינלאומי נגד עישון. יוני. ג'ון. יוני. יוני. ג'ון. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. We are getting married in June. אנחנו מתחתנים ביוני. יולי. July. יולי. יולי. July. יולי נקרא על שמו של יוליוס קיסר, שנולד ביולי. July is named for Julius Caesar, who was born in July. יולי נקרא על שמו של יוליוס קיסר, שנולד ביולי. אוגוסט. 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 בית הספר סגור באוגוסט. The school is closed in August. בית הספר סגור באוגוסט. ספטמבר. 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 בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. In September, Falls begins in the northern hemisphere, and spring in the southern hemisphere. בספטמבר מתחיל הסתיו בחצי הכדור הצפוני, והאביב בחצי הכדור הדרומי. אוקטובר אוקטובר אוקטובר. 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 
ליל כל הקדושים חל ב-31 באוקטובר. הלואין פאלס און אוקטובר 31st. ליל כל הקדושים חל ב-31 באוקטובר. נובמבר. 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 חג ההודיה, יום חמישי, ה-24 בנובמבר. Thanksgiving, Thursday, November 24th. חג ההודיה, יום חמישי, ה-24 בנובמבר. דצמבר, 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 דצמבר. השלושים ואחד בדצמבר הוא ערב ראש השנה. December 31st is New Year's Eve. השלושים ואחד בדצמבר הוא ערב ראש השנה. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Hi, everyone. Shalom. Welcome to Hebrew Weekly Word. Uh, my name is Yara, and this week's theme is fruit, perot. Uh, single is pri. So, fruit, exciting. Yay! Tapuach, apple. Green apples are my favorite. Tapuchim yirukim em tapuchim ahovim alai. Avatiach, watermelon. Avatiach, uh, plural is avatichim. Mm. Biyapan, yesh avatichim merubaim. Japan has square watermelons. It's true. Google it. Te'ena, fig. I actually love figs. Uh, I have a friend who can't eat them because she says that their insides look like worms. Sorry, that's a picture you won't be able to get out of your head. My grandmother had a fig tree. Mishmesh, apricot. The word is mishmesh, but Israelis usually say mishmish. Kaniti bashuk kilo mishmishim. I bought one kilo of apricots in the market. Dubdevan, cherry. This event was the cherry on my cream. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. And this is the end. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Hebrew Weekly Words. We talked about fruit, perot. So don't forget to check our website and see you next week. Bye. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew writing. In Hebrew, we use two different scripts, one for print and one for handwriting. Most people learn the printed script first, and even learn to write their letters this way. These are called otiot dfus. Printed letters are rarely used for handwriting other than in elementary school. So most people learn script letters very quickly after learning the printed letters. Script letters are called otiot ktav. One thing you don't have to worry about in Hebrew is capital letters. There's only one case for letters in Hebrew. Here's some general information about Hebrew letters. Hebrew is read right to left, the opposite of English. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and they are all consonants. 
You may be thinking, but what about vowels, right? These dots are placed underneath or next to the letter in order to let you know what vowel comes after the consonant. Here is the word for dog, kelev, without nikud. And here it is with nikud. Let's do the same with the word for boy, yeled. Without nikud, it's... And with nikud, it looks like this. Those are both with e vowels. Let's look at one with some other vowels. How about the word for mountains, harim? Here it is with nikud. This has both an a vowel and an e vowel. Although this is very useful when you're learning Hebrew, don't get used to it. Most things in Hebrew are written without the vowel dots. The reason we usually don't use nikud when writing Hebrew is that we don't really need it. That's right. Hebrew is very systematic and structured. It's very methodical and logical. Words are created according to patterns, and this helps you figure out what vowels are used in the words. You already know the word for dog, which is kelev. Next time you see this word, you don't need to see the vowels because you know they are there. You'll have to rely on what you've learned. There are some letters in Hebrew that will indicate what vowels are present. These letters are technically consonants, but can behave like vowels. Aleph, hey, vav, yud, ein. For example, the letter he often ends a word with an a or an e sound, like in the words laila for night and bune, the masculine singular form for build. There are five letters that change form when they're at the end of a word, but they're still the same letter. Chaf, chaf sofit, mem, mem sofit, nun, nun sofit, pe. Pei sofit, tzadi, tzadi sofit. Here is an example of how this works. The letter mem looks like this in the beginning or middle of the word, mem, like in the word for stage, bama. When it comes in the end, it looks like this, mem, like in the word for the sea, yam. Three letters can have two different sounds depending on whether they are in a stressed position or not. Bet is both b and b. In the word bama or stage, it makes a b sound, and in the word for dog or kelev, it makes a v sound. Chaf is both k and ch. For this example, we can use the word for dog again. In kelev, this letter makes a k sound, and in the word for correct, which is nchon, it makes a ch sound. This letter also has a special end form that looks like this. When it comes at the end of the word, like chiyuch, the word for smile, it's always pronounced ch. Pe is both p and f. In the word parpar, or butterfly, this letter is pronounced with a p sound. In the word for book, or sefer, it's pronounced with a f sound. There are also six pairs of letters that at one point in history had different sounds, but today sound very similar. Aleph and Ein, Bet and Vav, Chet and Chaf, Tet and Taf, Kaf and Kuf, Samech and Sin. For example, the words telephone, meaning telephone, and Tshuva, meaning answer begin with two different letters of the alphabet, but you would never know that unless you saw them written. One interesting aspect of the Hebrew alphabet is the letters also represent numbers. Aleph represents the number one, Bet represents the number two, and so on. When you get to the number ten, or Yud, we add the first nine letters to it to represent eleven through nineteen. The letters can be combined to create numbers into the hundreds and thousands. You can find the first ten letters used as numbers in many day-to-day -day contexts. For instance, Sunday is often referred to as Yom Aleph, or Day One. The first semester in university is called Semester Aleph. Okay, 
Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that there are two different scripts used to write Hebrew, printed script and written script. Hebrew is written and read from right to left. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are consonants. There are also vowels in Hebrew, and these are written with a dot system. Some letters in Hebrew cover two sounds, and other sounds are covered by two letters. And lastly, the Hebrew alphabet can also be used to represent numbers. If you want to learn more, check out our Learn Hebrew Writing video series. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Hebrew Boot Camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Hebrew right away. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Hebrew listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? בחנות הספרים, אישה שואלת משהו את המוכר. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Love these lessons? Want more? You'll find the rest of the Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy lessons on HebrewPod101.com. So sign up for your free lifetime account and unlock the full course in seconds. You also get audio and video lessons that get you speaking from your very first lesson and teach you real conversations. You'll get PDF lesson notes, cheat sheets, study tools, and much more. Click the link in the description below and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Weekly Words. My name is Yara and today we're gonna talk about the weather. The weather in Israel is mostly really hot, but for the rare occasions it's not. Uh, let's learn how to say that. Bahir. Clear sky. Bahir actually means bright, but we use it to describe a sunny day uh, with no clouds. Yom Bahir. Machar ye Bahir. Ulaina se picnic. Tomorrow the sky will be clear. Maybe we'll have a picnic. Geshem. Rain. Uh, when you want to say it's raining outside, you say Yored Geshem, which literally means rain is coming down. In Israel, it only rains during the winter, and even then, uh, not that much. Machar yered geshem, as ulay nevatel et picnic. Tomorrow it's going to rain, so maybe we'll cancel the picnic. Lach, humid. So lach is humid, lachut is humidity. There is one sentence you hear in the Israeli summer all the time. That's like the, the one sentence people keep saying to each other all the time during the summer. And the sentence is, which means it's not the heat, it's the humidity that makes the Israeli summer so horrible in an elevator conversation. It's hot today, eh? Oh, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And then everyone goes, yeah. Sheleg, mm -hmm. snow. It doesn't snow a lot in Israel. During the winter, there's one mountain who gets covered in snow, 
and this is where Israelis go to ski. It's pretty tiny. I don't think it matches up to European standards, but it's ours and we love it. Machag ani nosat lechermon livnot ish sheleg. Tomorrow I'm going to Mount Hermon to build a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Shemesh, sun. A heat stroke in Hebrew is makat shemesh. Makat shemesh, it's something like sun punch. And that's exactly how you feel after spending a whole day on the beach. Like the sun just punched you in the face. Tiru, hashemesh yatsa. Ulai bechol zot nasa picnic? Look, the sun came out. Maybe we'll have the picnic after all. Okay, so that's it for today. We're talking about the weather. Thank you so much for watching. And what's the weather like in your country now? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to check out the site. See you next week. Bye. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sun punch. I'm having a picnic. everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say bye in Hebrew? In this lesson, you will learn three parting expressions in Hebrew. Let's start with the easiest one. Lehitraot. Lehitraot. This means goodbye in Hebrew. You can use this on any occasion with anyone in Hebrew. If you want to say bye at night or in the evening, there is a different phrase you should use. Erev tov. Erev tov. This means good evening in Hebrew. The first word, Erev, means evening. And the next word, Tov, means good in Hebrew. If you know you're going to see the person again, here's a phrase for you. Deber iti. Deber iti. This literally means talk with me in Hebrew. You can use this to mean see you later. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the expressions and repeat after me. Goodbye. להתראות. להתראות. Good evening. ערב טוב. ערב טוב. See you later. The Berity. The Berity. Well done. Here's a fun fact. The other common way to say goodbye in Hebrew is by using Shalom. This word means both bye and take care. Give a slight wave and a loud shalom, and you'll be just like one of the locals. You just learned how to say bye in three different ways in Hebrew. And don't forget, you can learn Hebrew twice as fast with your free PDF lessons. Just click on the link in the description to download them. See you soon! The Berity! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, 
Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Hayom. Today. Hayom. Hayom. Today. Hayom b'shesh v'reva. Today at 6.15. Hayom b'shesh v'reva. Etmol. Yesterday. Etmol. Etmol. Yesterday. Rakachti etmol yom chofesh. I took a day off yesterday. Lakachti etmol yom chofesh. Machar. Tomorrow. Machar. Machar. Tomorrow. Nitraya machar. See you tomorrow. Nitraya machar. Shavua. Week. Shavua. Shavua. Week. Beshavua yesh shivaya mim. There are seven days in a week. Beshavua yesh shivaya yamim. Shana. Year. Shana. Shana. Year. Beshana yeshne masar chodashim. There are twelve months in a year. Beshana yesh shnem asar chodashim. Shnia. Second. Shnia. Shnia. Second. Yeshnan shishim shniot bedaka. There are sixty seconds in a minute. Yeshnan shishim shniot. Bedaka. Daka. Minute. Daka. Daka. Minute. Yeshnan shishim shniot bedaka. There are sixty seconds in a minute. Yeshnan shishim shniot bedaka. Sha'a. Hour. Sha'a. Sha'a. Hour. Yeshnan shishim dakot besha'a. There are sixty minutes in an hour. Yeshnan shishim dakot besha'a. Sha'on. 
o'clock. Shaon. Shaon. Clock. Shaon hakir taloi al hakir. The wall clock is hanging on the wall. Shaon hakir taloi al hakir. Hasha'a. O'clock. Hasha'a. Ha sha a. O'clock. Hasha'a shtemisre. It's twelve o'clock. Hasha'a shtemisre. Luach shana. Calendar. Luach shana. Luach shana. Calendar. Luach shana yomi. Day calendar. Luach shana yomi. Yom shani. Monday. Yom shani. Yom shani. Monday. Shvua ha'avoda matchil b'yom shani. The work week starts on Monday. Shvua ha'avoda matchil b'yom שני. יום שלישי. Tuesday. יום שלישי. יום שלישי. Tuesday. יום שלישי, הראשון בינואר. Tuesday, January 1st. יום שלישי, הראשון בינואר. יום רביעי, Wednesday. יום רביעי, יום רביעי, Wednesday. בימי רביעי בערב אנחנו משחקים פוקר אצלי בבית. Wednesday nights, we play poker at my house. בימי רביעי בערב, אנחנו משחקים פוקר אצלי בבית. יום חמישי, Thursday. יום חמישי, יום חמישי. Thursday. יום חמישי, השלושה בינואר. Thursday, January 3rd. יום חמישי, השלושה בינואר. יום שישי. Friday. יום שישי. יום שישי. פריידי. כתוב את התוכניות ליום שישי על לוח השנה. Write the plans for Friday on the calendar. כתוב את התוכניות ליום שישי על לוח השנה. יום שבת, Saturday. יום שבת, יום שבת, Saturday. אין תוכניות ליום שבת. No plans for Saturday. 
אין תוכניות ליום שבת. יום ראשון, סנדיי. יום ראשון. יום ראשון. סנדיי. יום ראשון הוא יום האב. Sunday is Father's Day. יום ראשון הוא יום האב. לעשות. Do. לעשות. לעשות. Do. אני עושה שיעורי בית כל יום אחרי הלימודים. I do homework every day after school. אני עושה שיעורי בית כל יום אחרי הלימודים. ללכת. Go. ללכת. ללכת. Go. לך ישר. Go straight ahead. לך ישר. Well done. In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Shalom, Aniyana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the letters Zayn and Chet. In this lesson, we will continue with the next two letters and learn another Nikud. Are you ready? Bo Natchil. The ninth letter of the Aleph Bet is Tet. It has the sound of T. Let's write it. The handwriting of Tet is... This letter is a little unusual. In that you need to start from the bottom up. And in print... Tet. If you round the corners of the print version, it will be just like the handwriting one. Tov is good in Hebrew. In the masculine form. T. O, V, Tov, and in print, Tov. In the feminine, you write Tova. And in print, Tova. Now, let's move on to the tenth letter, Yod, which has a Y sound. It is probably the simplest letter. Yod, just like a little comma on the upper right side of the frame. And in print version, Yod, almost the same, just with a little angle. Yad is hand in Hebrew. Yad, and in print, Yad. Now we've completed 10 letters of the Aleph Bet. You're almost halfway through. Can you believe it? Before finishing up, let's take a look at another Nikud. Shva. Shva has no sound. It is a silent vowel. It just keeps the original sound of the consonant. Like in Ach. 
Ach is a brother. Ach, an in print version. Ach, we will see more examples of schwa in the next lessons. We are ready to move beyond words and write a phrase. Ach, tov, is good brother in Hebrew. The noun comes first and then the adjective. And in print. Ach. Tov. Nice job. Soon you'll be able to write whole sentences. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Before starting the next lesson, try to write all the letters from Aleph to Yod several times in a row while loudly pronouncing each letter. In the next lesson, we will learn the 11th letter, Kaf, and after that, review half the Aleph Bet. How many can you remember? See you in the next lesson. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Last lesson, we reached the halfway point of the Hebrew Aleph Bet and did a review of what you've learned so far. Did you practice them all? So I guess you're ready for the next two letters that we will learn in this lesson. They are Lamed with the sound of L and the letter mem, with an m sound. So let's start writing. Lamed looks different in hand and print writing. So pay attention and remember to pronounce the letter while writing. Lamed. Lamed. Lamed looks like a loop, doesn't it? The word loop in Hebrew actually starts with lamed. Lula'a. Can you read this word without nikud? Lula'a, loop. Easy to remember, right? In print, it looks like this. So how loop will look in print? Yeled is a boy in Hebrew. Yeled. And in print version, yeled. If you wondered how we make the sound of e in yeled, you're paying very good attention. There is a new nikud there called segol, and it looks like this. You say it with the sound e. So let's write yeled with proper nikud. Yeled, and in print version, Yeled. Another example using Segol is Kelev. Kelev is a dog. And in print, Kelev. Could you read Kelev without any could there at all? Kelev. Great. The next letter is Mem, and it has an M mm sound. In handwriting, Mem looks like this. Mem. And in print, Mem. Mem changes when at the end of the word. 
just like in the previous lesson, half. It looks like this. Mem sofit. And in print, mem sofit. You might say it looks like a square. Mine is water in Hebrew. Here you can see both variations of mem. Mine. And in print version, mine. So how would you read this word? This is melech. Melech means a king in Hebrew. Melech. Me. Le. Ch. Here is Yana's insight. Have you been checking out the Aleph Bet transcripts for HebrewPod101.com's lessons? I bet you can read a lot more now than you could after lesson two. Go back and browse the Aleph Bet transcripts for a lesson or two, and you'll be amazed at how far you've come. Just think a little more and you'll understand the whole thing. This lesson will learn the letters Lamed and Mem, and the Nikud Segol with the sound of E. In the next lesson, we will have a little quiz. So practice your Aleph Bet and the Nikud. See you then. Lehitraot. My name is Yara, welcome to another episode of Top Hebrew Words and this episode is especially fun because today we're going to learn 10 phrases you always want to hear. So the first one is Tzedakt, you were right. Tzedakt, you were right. I said it in the female form, Tzedakt. For a male it would be Tzedakta, you were right. I knew it, I'm always right. Ani mitgagat elaych. I miss you. Ani mitgagat elaych. I miss you. This is a really interesting verb, I think, because it doesn't exist in English. In English, you say I miss you, which is which is really nice. But in Hebrew, you have a special verb for this feeling of missing someone or something. Mitgagia for a male. Mitgagat for a female. So I like this one. Ani mitgagat elaych. At tabachit meula. You're an excellent cook. At tabachit meula, you're an excellent cook. For a male, at tabach meule. At niret nehedar hayom, you look great today. At niret nehedar hayom, you look great today. For a male, at nire nehedar hayom. Heveti lach mashehu miyuchad. I brought you something special. Heveti lach mashehu miyuchad. I brought you something special. For a male, הבאתי לך משהו מיוחד. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. התקציב הוא בלתי מוגבל. The budget is unlimited. This goes for all genders. <laughs> Yay! את המנצחת. You are the winner. Yeah, it's always fun to hear. For a female it would be את המנצחת. You are the winner. אתה מנצח. You are the winner. <laughs> I want to thank my parents and everyone that helped me get here. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. Ye bonus besof achodesh. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Ye bonus besof achodesh. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yes. Asit avodah nehederet. You did a great job. Asit avodah nehederet. You did a great job. It's always fun to hear. For a male, it would be Asita Avodah Nehederet. Toda, lo ainu yicholim laasot et ze biladaich. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. Toda, lo yicholnu laasot et ze biladaich. Thanks, we couldn't have done this without you. For a male, biladecha. These were 10 phrases you always want to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Hey, here's a huge pile of money. <laughs>
Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken, so don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Hebrew, there are only 22 letters of the alphabet, and technically they're all consonants. There are also vowel sounds which are shown by the dot system called nikud. Many of the sounds are similar to English, like b, v, sh, s, and t. b, v, sh, s, t. But there are a few sounds you may not recognize at first. Like ch, a, s. In Hebrew, words are stressed differently than in English. Stress is usually on the last syllable of the word. Avoda, mutzetz, mitlabesh. But in some cases, the stress is on the second to last syllable of the word. Lakoach, nosea, mitlabeshet. Letters produce consonant sounds. These sounds are combined with vowel sounds indicated by the nikud. Vowel sounds you find in Hebrew are all found in English as well. A, E, I, O, U. There are different notations for these vowels, but in most cases, the basic vowel sound stays the same. The pattern of the word and the placement of the vowel determines which vowel symbol will be used. For example, the word for language, Lashon, and the word for crisis, Mshber, both have A vowels after the first letter. But because of the way the word is constructed, the vowels are notated differently. Some letters have two sounds, depending on if there's a stress on the consonant or not. Bet is both b and v. Kaf is both k and ch. Pe is both p and f. There is also one other letter that changes sound according to the dot above it. That's shin and sin. It makes the sh sound when the dot is on the right, and the s sound when the dot is on the left. The most daunting group of letters are the guttural letters. A, h, ch, a, r. Three of these letters are pronounced deep in the throat. These may feel unusual at first, but are fun to say once you get the hang of them. Ein, chet, reish. Most of the sounds in Hebrew are already sounds you use in English. That means that if you were to simply imitate a Hebrew speaker, your pronunciation would be correct a lot of the time. For example, listen and repeat after eat it. Rakevet. Rakevet. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The K, V, and T sounds are practically identical to English. It's only the R that's a little different. Focus on this first letter. It's often written as an R, but don't be fooled. This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. We've covered only the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out our ultimate guide to Hebrew pronunciation. In that video series, we teach you how to pronounce every single sound used in Hebrew. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Hebrew grammar where you'll learn about Hebrew word order and how to build basic phrases in Hebrew. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye.
and getting ready dance. Hi everyone, welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara and today's theme is 15 questions you should know. So, let's start. Me'efo ata, where are you from? Me'efo ata, where are you from? And if you want to ask a female, it's me'efo at. Ani mi Tel Aviv. I am from Tel Aviv. Ben kama ata, how old are you? Ben kama ata, how old are you? For a female, it would be bat kama at. I'm not going to answer that one. Ma shimcha, what's your name? Ma shimcha, what is your name? For a female, ma shmech. A more common way of asking that would be ech koreim lecha, or for a female, ech koreim lach, which literally mean how are you called? Ma shlomcha, how are you? Ma shlomcha, or ma shlomech, for a woman, and this is how are you? How do you feel? Ma ze, what's this? Maze, what is this? Maze. Some people use it uh, as what? Like what did you say? Maze. But uh, most of the times it's used uh, when you want to know what a thing is. Excuse me. Maze. Ma amarta. What did you say? Ma amarta. What did you say? And for a female, ma amart. Lo amarti klum. I didn't say anything. Efo ata oved, where do you work? Efo ata oved, where do you work? And for a female, efo at ovedet. Efo hashirutim, where is the bathroom? Memorize this one. Efo hashirutim, where is the bathroom? Excuse me. Efo hashirutim. Efo ata gar, where do you live? Efo ata gar, where do you live? Or for a female, efo at gara. Matai yom hahuledet shelcha? When is your birthday? Matai yom hahuledet shelcha? When is your birthday? For a female, matai yom hahuledet shelach. Kama zman atalomed ivrit? How long have you been studying Hebrew? Kama zman atalomed ivrit? How long have you been studying Hebrew? For a female, Kama zman at lomedet ivrit? Efo lamadeta ivrit? Where did you learn Hebrew? Efo lamadeta ivrit? Where did you study Hebrew? Or for a female, Efo lamadet ivrit? That's an easy question. Hebrewpod101.com Haita bi Israel? Have you been to Israel? Haita bi Israel? Have you been to Israel? For a female, hait Israel. Well, have you? Ata ohev ochel israeli? Do you like Israeli food? Ata ohev ochel israeli? Do you like Israeli food? And for a female, at ohevet ochel israeli? Efo ata rotze levaker? Where do you want to visit? Efo ata rotze levaker? Where do you want to visit? Or for a female, Efo at Rotsa Levaker. So this is it. This was 15 questions that you should know in Hebrew. Thank you so much for watching. And have you ever been to Israel? What is your favorite Israeli food? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com.
Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Hulza. Shirt. Hulza. Hulza. Shirt. Hulza alta matayim shkalim. The shirt costs two hundred shekels. Hulza alta matayim shkalim. Michnasayim. Pants. Michnasayim. Michna. Sayim Pants Ani tsrikha zug mikhnasayim I would like a pair of pants Ani tsrikha zug mikhnasayim Simla Dress Simla. Sim la. Dress. Yesh simla yafa bachanut azot. There is a nice dress in this store. Yesh simla yafa bachanut hazot. Amar. Say. Amar. A. Mar. Say. Ma amart? Lo amarti klum. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Ma amart? Lo amarti klum. Lehit kasher. Car. Lehit kasher. Lehit kasher. Car. Haim tuchalit kasher la misparaze? Could you call this number? Ha'im tuchal lehit kasher la mispar haze? Limtso. Find. Limtso. Limtso. Find. אני לא מצליח למצוא את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. I can't find the way back to my hotel. אני לא מצליח למצוא את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. נקי Clean. Naki. Na. Ki. Clean. Hamedina hazot nekiya meod. This country is very clean. Hamedina hazot nekiya meod. מלוכלך. דרי. מלוכלך. מלוכלך. 
lach. Dirty. Adashat ha-matzlema melukhlechet. The camera's lens is dirty. Adashat ha-matzlema melukhlechet. Gezer. Carrot. Gezer. Gezer. Carrot. אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? Can you add carrot to the salad? אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? בצל עניין בצל בצל. עניין. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. She wants pizza with onions. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. חסה. Lettuce. Chasa. Chasa. Lettuce. Chasa makhila vitamin K. Lettuce contains vitamin K. Chasa makhila vitamin K. K. Kevis. Sheep. Kevis. Kevis. Sheep. Ha Kevis ochel et hadeshe hayarok. The sheep is eating the green grass. Hakeves ochel et hadeshe hayarok. Arnav. Rabbit. Arnav. Ar nav Rabbit Arnavim הם חמודים, אבל מסריחים. Rabbits are cute, but smelly. Arnavim הם חמודים, אבל מסריחים. כלב ים seal the animal כלב ים כלב ים seal the animal כלבי ים חיים באזורים הקרים ביותר seals live in the coldest areas כלבי ים חיים באזורים הקרים ביותר. ענן cloud ענן ענן cloud מזג האוויר היום הוא שמשי עם עננים מזדמנים. Today's weather is sunny with occasional clouds. 
מזג האוויר היום הוא שמשי עם עננים מזדמנים. שמשי סאני שמשי שמשי סאני בימים שמשיים חוף הים מלא באנשים. On sunny days, the beach is very crowded. בימים שמשיים חוף הים מלא באנשים. גשום ריני גשום גשום ריני אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. תינוק, בייבי, תינוק, תינוק, בייבי. התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת. The baby is being taken care of by the nanny. התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת. ילדה. Girl. ילדה. ילדה. Girl. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. The girl loves to eat pasta. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. ילד. בוי. ילד. ילד. בוי. יש לילד כלב מחמד. The boy has a pet dog. יש לילד כלב מחמד. Well done! In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. You. Hey, you. You. Yeah, you. Welcome to Hebrew Top World. So, my name is Yara, and I do not know uh, today's words, but the theme is 10 hardest words to pronounce in Hebrew. So, let's begin. חצוצרה, טראמפט. חצוצרה, טראמפט. הייתי רוצה לנגן בחצוצרה. I would like to play the trumpet. לצחצח, to brush. חשוב מאוד לצחצח שיניים פעמיים ביום. It is very important to brush your teeth twice a day. צריכים. must, need. צריכים. must. צריכים is... is the word must, but in the plural masculine version of this word. הם צריכים, they must, they need. For example, הם צריכים לעזוב את המסיבה המוקדם. 
they must leave the party early. They must or they need to, or they have to. Chaticha, peace. Chaticha, peace. I, it's not like, it, there, these are not tongue twisters, it's just, it's for people who can't pronounce ch. Shar lekabel chatichat uga, bevakasha? Can I have a piece of cake, please? Menatznet. Sparkling. I love this word. Menatznet. Sparkling. Yeah, I, okay, I love this lesson. These are really fun words. It's fun to say. Try it. Come on. Nice. For example, Hasharasheret sheli menatznetzet. My necklace is sparkly. It's not really, but just, you know, use your imagination. Pa'alulim. Special effects. Pa'alulim. But it's more fun saying it fast. Pa'alulim. So usually like a stuntman will be called Pa'alulan. Now that I, 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 I'm saying it over and over again, I'm like, is this a real word? I'm not sure all of a sudden, but it is. Wow. Mi haya achrai al ha-pa'alulim b'seret hazeh? Wow, who is in charge of the special effects in this movie? Shifshuf, rub. This is a noun. The verb will be leshafshef. Im nishpach lechem yain adom al ha-shatiach, deshafshifu oto b'melach. If you spilled red wine on your carpet, rub it with salt. Someone told me about this method. I did not uh, check it, so <laughs> I don't really know. Letzachkek, to giggle. Letzachkek. To giggle. Oh, that's a wonderful word. To laugh is litzchok. So this is like the smaller version of it, litzchkek. And the noun version is tichkuk. Tichkukim, yeah, in plural. Hem lo efsiku litzchkek bezman shedibarti. They wouldn't stop giggling while I was talking. How rude. Machzelet, mat. Machzelet, mat. כשאתם הולכים לים, אל תשכחו לקחת מחצלת. When you go to the beach, don't forget to take a mat. שרוכים, שולייסס. שרוכים, שולייסס. באיזה גיל למדתם לקשור את השרוכים? What age did you learn to tie your own shoelaces? So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the 10 hardest word uh, to pronounce in Hebrew. I hope we will learn something new. Tell us in the comments what was your favorite word and don't forget to check the website. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, Edith here. Today we're going to talk about 10 responses to how are you in Hebrew. Of course. Ma shlomcha? How are you? Ma shlomcha? How are you? So yeah, like this is the most common way to ask people in Hebrew how they are. You can also say like, hey, what's up? Or, you know, how's it going? But the most simple way is ma shlomcha? Veta? And you? So after you've been asked how are you and you've given your response, you would ask the other person, and you? Veta. Aniba Sado. I'm fine. Aniba Sado. I'm fine. Yeah, just Besado is literally just fine. It can be, you know, fine. It can be fine. Shlomi Lora. I'm not bad. Shlomi Lora. I'm not bad. So I think people usually would say that after they maybe they had. A bit of a rough time, I don't know, like maybe at work or something personal. And then when people ask them how they're doing, so they would say, Oh, I'm not bad. Like, you know, it's getting better. Gam shlomitov. I'm fine too. Gam shlomitov. I'm fine too. When you say gam in the beginning of the sentence, it's the same as saying in English too, but in the end of the sentence. So in Hebrew, you would say it first. Gam shlomitov. I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I think nowadays it's like a very common thing to say, like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sleepy. When do you guys actually like wake up? I only wake up after I have a cup of coffee and then maybe another hour. 
אני מרגיש רע. I'm feeling bad. אני מרגיש רע. I'm feeling bad. So if you're ill, usually yes, ill or having a headache, you would say that you feel bad. It's not so much as like an emotional thing, or you know, I'm hurting, I'm sad. It's like, I feel bad, I'm, I'm ill. Shlomi Metsuyan. I'm great. Shlomi Metsuyan. I'm great. When you're really doing well, like you really have it, it's like, I'm great. Metsuyan. Echo lechitcha. How have you been? Echo lechitcha. How have you been? So since in Hebrew we don't have as much tenses as English, and we don't have like all of the progressive tenses, it's just past, past um, present and future. Um, when we try to ask like, oh, how have you been doing the last few days? How have you been doing the last few weeks? So we would say, How are things going for you? Pretty much that's the literal translation. Manishma, what's up? Manishma, what's up? Um, so this is like the number one most common expression um, in Israel when you ask people how they're doing and it's very friendly and casual. Like when you say Manishma, it's just like saying what's up. And the literal translation, it's like saying what is heard? Like what do you have to tell me that is new? Please do. Please tell me. Um, so that's it. That's Manishma. So thanks everyone. Thank you for watching that video. Today we discussed about how to respond to how are you. Please let me know in the comments below like what are the most surprising responses you ever gotten. It's like, oh, how are you? Uh, yeah, my dog died. It's, you know, stuff like that. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like up this video. And also don't forget to get into uh, HebrewPod101.com for more content and more Hebrew. And I will see you all next time. Lehitrot. Here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about 10 ways to say hello. Let's get started. Boker Tov. Good morning. Boker Tov. Good morning. Some people, if they're having like kind of a bad morning and they don't want to say good morning or Boker Tov, they would just say like Boker morning. Obviously. <laughs> Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Hello. Shalom also means peace in Hebrew. So it's almost kind of Rastafarian, you know, peace. Harbez man lo hitraenu. Long time no see. Harbez man lo hitraenu. Long time no see. I guess in Hebrew it's not quite as natural to say as it is in English. Um, so if you really want to be super casual, um, you can also say something like, um, Why? Shanim. It's like, it's like saying, whoa, ages, without even saying, it has been. Just ages. How have you been? How have you been? This is more of a way to ask somebody like that you really haven't seen for a while, like, what has he been up to? And you say it, which is a very casual way of saying it. It's very useful. How are you? How are you? Also comes from the word shalom. So literally, it's kind of like asking, how is your peace? How is your day? How is your day? Um, that's a nice thing to text somebody, like your boyfriend or girlfriend in the middle of the day, um, just to see how they're doing. What's up? What's up? There are so many ways of saying it in Hebrew. Um, the most common ones is, are this, this one, ma kore, 
which is more like what's happening, and also manishma, which is like what's up. Erev tov, good evening. Erev tov, good evening. So, like English, I think erev tov is not something that you would use like with your friends or in any casual situation. It's more like when you're going to a restaurant or some sort of a service giver would say that, not like with friends. Naim lehakir otcha. It's nice to meet you. Naim lehakir otcha. Nice to meet you. Um, as a matter of fact, a more common way of saying it is to just drop the last part, dropping the otach or otcha, and simply say, Naim lehakir. It's like saying uh, in English, it's a pleasure. Ech hakol. How's everything? Ech hakol. How's everything? Uh, also a very, like, friendly way of asking, like, how's life? Um, and if you want to ask, how's life? You can ask, Ech hachaim. Okay, everybody, that's it. This was 10 ways to say hello in Hebrew. Let me know in the, com in the comments below if there's anything else that you would like to know. And I would say goodbye in 10 different ways, but I don't have any time. So see you next time. Goodbye. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we finished up the first 10 Hebrew letters of the Aleph Bet and six Nikud symbols. Can you remember how to write good brother in Hebrew? I'm sure you can do it. Now let's move on to the 11th letter, Kaf. The sound of Kaf is K. Let's write it. Kaf. Just half a circle to the right, starting from the upper left side and going down. The print is the same, but with sharp corners. Kaf. Kaf actually is only pronounced like k when it has a dot inside. Just like bet only has the b sound when it has this dot. Without the dot, it sounds like ch. Chaf. A good example is the word kochav, kochav, which means a star. K, O, Ha, V, kochav, and in print version. Kochav. Be careful though, the letter chaf takes a different shape when it is written at the end of the word. It looks like this. Chaf Sofit. The print is quite similar. Chaf Sofit. Now let's have a short review of the first 11 letters, the first half of the alphabet. Be ready with a pen and a paper. I'll say the letter out loud, starting from Aleph and give you a second to write it down, first in handwriting and then in print style. Then I will write it myself, first the handwriting version and then the print. Are you ready? Let's go! Aleph Aleph Bet Bet, Gimel. Gimel, Dalet. Dalet, Hey.
hey, vav. Vav, zain. Zain, chet. Chet, tet. Tek, yod. Yod, and kaf. Kaf, good job. Now it's time for Yana's insights. How is your Aleph Bet learning going? If you're having a tough time with some characters, how about checking them out on the Aleph Bet chart in HebrewPod101.com's Learning Center. Don't just get stuck in one learning method. Mix it up for the best results. In this lesson, we studied the letter Kaf with its variations and did a review of the last 11 Aleph Bet letters. Next lesson, we will continue with two more letters. Do you know what Lama means? So why not join me in the next lesson. See you then. Bye. I should have done a little dance before I sat down. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and this is Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. Let's begin. Yom. Day. Etmol aya yom ha'uledet sheli. Yesterday was my birthday. It wasn't really. Shana. Year. Ashana achrona ita metsuyenet. The last year was wonderful. Sha'a. Hour. Sha'a means hour, but when you want to know what time it is, you ask ma ha'sha'a, which literally translates as uh, what hour is this? Ma ha'sha'a. What time is it? Chalon. Window. Tiftechi et chalon, champo. Open a window, it's hot in here. It is. Bait. Home. Bait. Home uh, or house, it's the same. Baruch haba la bait sheli. Welcome to my home or to my house. Avoda. Work. It's a work, it's also a job. Yesh li avoda chadasha. I have a new job. Derech. Way. הדרך הביתה ארוכה מאוד. The way home is very long. מקום. Place. מה היה המקום האחרון שביקרת בו? What was the last place you visited? Tell us in the comments. חבר. Friend. חבר. Friend. It also means a boyfriend, uh, which can be kind of confusing sometimes. הלכתי עם החבר שלי לסרט. I went with my friend to watch a movie. It can also mean I went with my boyfriend to watch a movie, so, yeah. Chaim, life. There's a band called Chaim. So actually this noun in Hebrew is one of the very few that is plural. Elu chaim niflaim. What a wonderful life. Chevra, company. Itkabalti la'avoda b'chevra gdola. I got a job in a big company. Mispar, number. Ma mispar adira shelach? What is your apartment number? קבוצה, group. יש קבוצה גדולה של אנשים מחוץ לחלון שלי. There's a big group of people outside my window. And they're noisy. עובדה, fact. חתולים הם אדירים, וזאת עובדה. Cats are awesome, and that's a fact. בעיה, problem. אני יכולה לתקן לך את המחשב, זאת לא בעיה. I can fix your computer, it's not a problem. It definitely can't. ילד, child. How many children do you have? כמה ילדים יש לך? עולם, world. אני חולמת לעשות טיול מסביב לעולם. I dream of going on a trip around the world. Finance me. שבוע, week. 
אני יוצאת לחופשה של שבוע. I'm going on a one week vacation. משפחה, family. יש לה משפחה גדולה. She has a big family. אינטרנט, אינטרנט. סבתא שלי בדיוק למדה לגלוש באינטרנט. My grandmother just learned to surf the internet. You go, grandma! Hi! חודש, month. I'm going on a one month vacation. <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> אני מקבלת משכורת כל חודש. I get my salary every month. אוכל, food. מה האוכל האהוב עליכם? What is your favorite food? יד, hand. תני לי את היד שלך, אני אעזור לך לעלות. Give me your hand, I'll help you up. רחוב, street. הבית שלי נמצא בקצה הרחוב. My house is at the end of the street. סבתא, grandma. A lot of people say סבתא, because it's like easier to say. לסבתא שלי יש חשבון פייסבוק. My grandma has a Facebook account. Add her now! Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching uh, Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye! That's kind of something my grandma would say. Who chose these words? Never heard any complaints yet. Shalom everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about 15 must-know family words. Let's get started. Mishpacha, family. Mishpacha, family. Zot muna shel mishpachti. This is a picture of my family. Av, Abba, father. Av, Abba, father. Miha Abba shel Mario. Who is Mario's father? So in Hebrew, there are basically two ways for saying father or dad. And one of them is Abba, which is the more natural one, a normal one that people use. And it can mean dad or daddy or father also. It's like a real word. It's not just like daddy. Um, and Av is a little bit more biblical and more formal. And people don't usually use it, but it's still it's an important word to know. Obviously, both of the words are very close, with just the difference of one letter in the end. Um, so you can understand, but just so you'll know that av is a bit more serious, I guess. Baal, husband. Baal, husband. Baali ahuv mevashel bishvili. My beloved husband is cooking for me. So, actually now, a lot of... Women, and especially, I guess, feminist women, um, don't want to use the word Baal anymore because it, it, is, it does come from the word owner. And, of course, yes, it comes from the Bible, and back then men used to own women. But since we don't live at that time anymore, uh, many women just don't say that word anymore. And they say uh, an equivalent to my man, which is Ishi, Ben. Son, Ben, son, Haben Shali, student of Universita. My son is a university student. This is really easy. The word for son in Hebrew is just the same as the word for boy. Um, ben. Ach, brother. Ach, brother. Le'aba Shali, yesh losha achim. My father has three brothers. This is also like a very easy word, ach. If you got your... Chetz, right? Then you'll be fine. Dod, uncle. Dod, uncle. Hadod sheli rofe. My uncle is a doctor. Another interesting like factoid is that the word dod in the Bible doesn't only mean uncle, but sometimes it's used as meaning my love, um, especially in the Song of Songs and uh, Salmi. But it doesn't have anything to do like the word uncle and the word my love or lover has any, nothing to do with each other. So, Saba, grandfather. Saba, grandfather. Yarashti tashaona ze mi Saba sheli. I inherited this clock from my grandfather. So, as you can see, most of the words in Hebrew for like family members are quite short and easy. 
because you use them a lot. <laughs> um, family is very important in Jewish culture and in Israeli culture. It's a very, it's a very family oriented culture, I guess. So, yeah, like even the words for dad and granddad are very similar. It's Abba and Saba. M, Ima, mother. M, Ima, mother. Ima and Abba Shali have been married for 50 years. My mother and father were married for 50 years. So again, for the word for mom or mother, the word Ima is more common and used as mom, mommy, mother. And the word M again is more biblical, it's shorter, it's more official. Um, just the same as we've learned about father. Bat, daughter. Bat, daughter. Habat shalanu, professorit baunivarsita. והבן שלנו איש עסקים. Our daughter is a university professor, and our son is a businessman. Again, very easy, the word for daughter is just the same as the word for girl, but. אחות, sister. אחות, sister. היא האחות הגדולה שלי, והיא עורכת דין. She is my older sister, and she is a lawyer. אחות, as you can probably tell, sounds very similar to אח, just with a suffix for female. <laughs> Isha, wife. Isha, wife. He Isha v'em. She's a wife and a mother. The word for wife is the same as the word for woman. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, it's like, she's my woman, she's my wife. It's the same. Um, and when a man says my wife, he would say the most common way to hear it is ishti. Chamot, chama. Mother-in-law. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Al titen lechama shtaltanit lirdot becha. Don't be pushed around by an overbearing mother-in-law. It's not just the mothers, everybody, okay? Also, there are two words for the word mother-in-law, and they're very similar. Chama and chamot. And they're both used kind of, you know, interchangeably. Savta. Grandmother. Savta. Grandmother. Savta machina et pala tapuchim atov ba'olam. My grandmother makes the best apple pie in the world. Well, I guess American grandmothers. <laughs> My grandmother made the best rice casserole in the world. <laughs> Bat zug. Ben zug. Partner. Bat zug. Ben zug. Partner. Harbe gvarim tseirim mechapsim bat zug. Many young men are looking for a partner. So in Hebrew, again, you always have the difference between male and female, unlike English when partner can be both male and female. So when you're talking about a boy partner, it's ben zug, and a girl partner is bat zug. Um, like we've learned that ben is boy and bat is girl and also daughter and ben is also son. It's very, very simple. Doda, aunt. Doda, aunt. Hadoda Shali ohevet prachim tsubin. My aunt likes yellow flowers. Sometimes we use the word for aunt in Hebrew also when we see just like a woman who's a little bit older, maybe like in her 50s, and she seems to, you know, have this older woman vibe, or when we say about somebody that she dresses older from her age or puts a makeup that makes her look older than her true age, then we can say that she looks like a doda, she looks like an aunt. Um, I don't know why that is, but actually I think that's a very accurate way to say it, like, oh yeah, she looks like a tall aunt. So, yeah. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Today we've learned about 15 must-know family words in Hebrew. Please let me know in the comments below. Tell me about your family and who is your favorite family member. And don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more contents, and I'll see you next time. Bye! everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide.
In this lesson, you'll learn all five Hebrew vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Hebrew. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel sound is A, Gam, Bach, Dag. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in far. A, A. Ah. Ah. The next vowel sound is E. Shell. Ken. Kehe. It's very similar to the E in the word education. E. 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 The next vowel sound is E. Misim. Imun. Tinok. This is identical to the I in ski. E. 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 The next vowel sound is O. Shalom. Noar. Shalom. It's very similar to the O sound in the word or. O. 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 The last vowel sound for this lesson is U Tmuna Aduma Medura. This is identical to the U in the word rule. U U U U Well done. You've just learned all five vowel sounds in Hebrew. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Hebrew language. Isn't that great? Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to pronounce? Let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, you'll start learning consonant sounds. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The first thing you must remember when reading Hebrew is that it's read from right to left. Consider the English sentence, he ate an apple, but first, Let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with he ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence he ate apple, we can see that the subject he is presented first, followed by the verb ate. And then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence. He ate an apple in Hebrew. Hu achal tapuach. In Hebrew, you only need an article for definite articles. Here we have only an indefinite article, so we don't need a word like a or n. If we break down the Hebrew sentence, we get the subject hu, meaning he. Then comes the verb achal, meaning ate. And finally, we have the object tapuach meaning apple. The word order for Hebrew is the same as English, subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. In Hebrew, for simple sentences with a verb, the order is the same as in English. 
Word order varies in Hebrew for emphasis and in more complicated sentences. You don't have to worry about that until you learn the basics. For now, use the basic subject, verb, object form when making sentences in Hebrew. Okay, let's move on to the next section. In Hebrew, you want to begin with the subject of your sentence. Let's start with the pronoun I. In Hebrew, that's ani. Next, you need your verb. In the present tense, there are four forms for verbs according to masculine, feminine, masculine plural, and feminine plural. When your subject is I, the verb is conjugated either in masculine or feminine, depending on who is talking. Using the verb to love, le'ehov, as an example, the masculine is ohev, and the feminine is ohevet. So, what do we have so far? I'm a woman, so I would use the feminine. Ani ohevet. The last thing we need is an object, something you love. How about dogs? Klavim. Ani ohevet klavim. I love dogs. If I were a man, I would say, Ani ohev klavim. So, it's as simple as that, and very similar to English. Now it's your turn. See if you can use these words to make the sentence, The boy loves dogs. Ohev. Klavim. Hayeled. Did you succeed? First, you need the subject, the boy. In the present tense in Hebrew, the verb is determined by the number and gender of the subject. Here, we have one boy. Hayeled. Then you need to add the verb, the boy loves. This verb will be conjugated in masculine singular for the boy. That's ohev. Hayeled ohev. Finally, you add the object. Altogether, the boy loves dogs. Hayeled ohev klavim. But what if you're not a dog lover and you want to express that in Hebrew? Forming the negative in Hebrew is very easy. You just need to know one word. Lo. To make the sentence negative, you add this word before the verb. Ani lo ohevet klavim. Great! Now you know how to make a sentence in Hebrew and you know how to say it in the negative. Next, we're going to teach you one more thing. How to ask a question in Hebrew. This is really difficult. Are you ready for this? You don't have to change a word in the sentence. To ask a question in Hebrew, you change how you say the words in the sentence. Let's hear, the boy loves dogs, as a question. Let's hear the difference between the normal sentence and the question. The normal sentence is, The question is, the formal way to ask this as a question is to add a word to the beginning of the sentence. But this way is not used very often in speech. You say ha'im before the rest of the sentence. Ha'im ha'yeled ohev klavim? If you want to ask who loves dogs, you replace the subject with the word for who. That word is mi. Mi ohev klavim? Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order, just like in English. Secondly, you learned how to make a sentence negative by adding one word before the verb. Lastly, you learned that asking questions in Hebrew is easy because you only have to change the way you say the sentence to ask a question. We've covered only the very basics of Hebrew grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Hebrew in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Hebrew grammar, and each lesson is only three minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Hebrew writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day? In this lesson, you'll learn some important phrases about the Hebrew New Year and some valuable cultural tips. In Hebrew, New Year's Day is called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah.
On Rosh Hashanah, Israeli people greet each other by saying Shana Tova. Shana Tova. This means Happy New Year. When you meet someone for the first time in the new year, be sure to greet them with this phrase. In Israel, New Year's Day also has a nickname. Yom Din. Yom Din. This means the Day of Judgment. On this day, people are judged on what they did in the previous year, and then they predict what will happen in the coming year. The custom most associated with the festival is the shofar. Between holiday prayers, the shofar is blown loudly. The shofar is made from a ram's horn, and the noise it makes, which sounds like crying, opens the heart and reminds people how important this day really is. Israeli people also celebrate the holiday with special events and customs. The most popular one is Tashlich. Tashlich. This is a ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah. In Israel, people do not celebrate New Year's Day on the same day that many countries do. Israel uses a Hebrew calendar alongside the Gregorian calendar. The Hebrew year begins on the 1st of Tishrei. And on that day, people celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the holiday marking the beginning of the new year. This day differs each year as it does not match exactly with the Gregorian calendar. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the words and repeat after me. New Year's Day Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah Happy New Year Shana Tova Shana Tova Day of Judgment Yom Din Yom Din A ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah Tashlich Tashlich Well done! Here's a fun fact. Do you know why it is customary to eat apples and honey on Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah, it is customary to dip slices of apple or tapuach in honey and greet each other by saying that we shall be renewed with a good and sweet year. Or in Hebrew, Shetitchadesh aleinu shana tova umetuka. So, in other words, we are asking that the following year will be as good as the sweet taste of apples and honey. You just learned how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day and some important facts about the holiday. And if you want to learn Hebrew twice as fast, just click in the link in the description and download tons of PDF lessons for free. I'll see you next time. Toda raba! Celebrate. Can I go to sleep? <laughs>
But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Hebrew, and here they are. There are 19 consonant sounds and five vowel sounds. Each symbol that you see here represents a single sound determined by the IPA, which is a standardized way to represent sounds without the baggage that often comes with traditional letters. By using all of these sounds, you can form every single word in Hebrew. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 19 consonant sounds in Hebrew, you already know 16 of the original sounds. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore all of the vowel sounds for the same reason. The only thing standing between you and perfect Hebrew pronunciation is three new consonant sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Yara, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Shalom, Ani Yara. Yara will be giving you native pronunciation examples to imitate, but for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Hebrew. Ra, Seva, Ochel. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Hebrew learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Hebrew. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Hebrew sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood, and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Hebrew. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. What is the hardest part of Hebrew pronunciation? Tell us about it in the comments. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Hebrew tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. You will recognize the schwa vowel by the two vertical dots underneath the consonant. In Hebrew, many words contain a schwa vowel. There are three different kinds of schwa vowels. The first kind is a short E-like sound. Le. The second is a full stop on the consonant it's underneath. Lehitlabesh. And the third is a move to the next consonant without a vowel. Ftucha. The resulting combination of consonants often feels unnatural to learners of Hebrew. Vista. Instead of properly combining these letters, new speakers often put a short vowel between the two. In order to correct this problem, Hebrew students should practice these special letter combinations. Listen to the examples. Gdola. Ktana. Zman. Number two, the Hebrew letter resh. This is a problematic letter for learners of Hebrew, particularly for English speakers, because this R sound does not exist in English. The Hebrew R sound is similar to the German or French R. Unlike the English R, which is pronounced with the tip of the tongue at the front of the mouth, the Hebrew R is pronounced using the back of the tongue with a slight roll. You can think of it like gargling air at the back of your throat. Listen to the following examples. Kar. Rishon. Horim. We'll teach you how to pronounce this sound in lesson six. Number three, misplacing stress. A common mistake for new speakers of Hebrew is the misplacement of stress. In the beginning, most foreign speakers model their stress patterns after their native language. Correcting this is very easy because most Hebrew words are stressed on the last syllable. Pay attention to the stress pattern in the following Hebrew words. Bgadim. Yalda. Lilmod. 
When words aren't stressed on the last syllable, they are part of a very specific group of words, all containing a similar stress pattern. Medaberet, Sefer, Tapuach. We'll teach you how to speak Hebrew with the correct stress in lesson eight. Number four, foreign words in Hebrew. When you see a word you recognize from your own language in Hebrew, your first instinct is to pronounce it like it is in your own language. However, many foreign words in Hebrew have been modified to have different stress patterns. They may even use different sounds altogether. Pay attention to how native speakers pronounce these words, and you'll learn them quickly. Listen to Yara. Universita. Televisia. Sandwich. Number five. While this letter is usually difficult for foreign speakers to pronounce correctly in the beginning, it is also one that many people perfect with a good amount of practice. This is a guttural H pronounced at the back of the throat. It has a bad reputation because it sounds as though you're bringing up phlegm from your throat. It's possible that non-native speakers are afraid to make this sound, and this is why it has become known as a difficult Hebrew letter to pronounce. There's no need to be afraid of this letter because this sound is part of what gives Hebrew its uniqueness. Listen and repeat alongside Yara. Cheder, Chavera, Bachar, Noach. Practice often, and you'll be sure to master this elusive sound in no time. Now you know the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make the same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Hebrew. What's your biggest challenge with Hebrew pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Yara. Welcome to Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. So, let's begin. Tov, good. הגלידה הזאת ממש טובה. This ice cream is really good. נהדר, wonderful. For the word wonderful, we have another word in Hebrew, um, which is maybe more similar to the word in English because it has the word wonder in it. And this is nifla. So nifla and נהדר, uh, they have a very similar meaning. You can use each of them for the word wonderful. הקונצרט היה נהדר, or הקונצרט היה נפלא. Which means the concert was wonderful. Ra, bad. Ah, falafel is not bad at all. This falafel is not bad at all. No falafel is bad. Tsair, young. Now I'm 30, but once I was young. Now I'm 30 years old, but once I was young. Chadash, new. Yes, let me spore it chadasha. I got a new haircut. Yeshan, old. You can't um, say it about old people. It's only about uh, old objects, like an old car or an old book. I love the smell of old books. Aroch, long. Avatar was too long. Rishon, first. Fun fact, in Hebrew, you don't have names for the days of the week. You just call them first day, second day, third day. The first day, Sunday, is called Yom Rishon. He came in first in the competition. Acharon, last. Last weekend, I went to Jerusalem. Mukdam, early. I hate waking up early. מאוחר, late. הוא הגיע מאוחר מדי. He arrived too late. קצר, short. הייתם פעם בפסטיבל הסרטים הקצרים של תל אביב? Have you ever been in Tel Aviv's short films festival? רחוק, far. הבית שלי רחוק מתחנת הרכבת. My house is far from the train station. מעט, few, or Little, if you talk about quantity. מעט מאוד אנשים הגיעו למסיבה. Very few people came to the party. That's a really sad sentence. הרבה, 
many or a lot. בקיץ יש הרבה אנשים בחופים של תל אביב. In the summer there are many people at the beaches of Tel Aviv. חשוב, important. האירוע הזה חשוב לי מאוד. This event is very important to me. יפה, beautiful. באביב הגליל ממש יפה. In springtime the Galilee is really beautiful. קטן, small. העיר הזאת קטנה מדי בשביל שנינו. This town is too small for the two of us. Beware. גדול, big. This town is big enough for the both of us. וואו, הבניין הזה ממש גדול. וואו, this building is really big. מהר, fast. היא נוהגת ממש מהר. She drives really fast. לאט, slow or slowly. השיעור הזה עובר ממש לאט. This class is going by really slow. שונה, different. השיעור הזה שונה מאוד מהשיעור הקודם. This class is very different from the last class. דומה, similar. החדר הזה דומה מאוד לחדר ההוא. This room is very similar to that room. מנומס, פלייט. הילד הקטן הזה מנומס מאוד. This small child is very פלייט. נחמד, nice. Uh, you can say that about places and about people as well. And about experiences. It was nice. זה היה נחמד. איך היה הטיול? היה נחמד מאוד. How was the trip? It was very nice. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye! Oh, oh no, someone is pressing the button. Okay, but nothing's happening. <laughs>
Hi everyone! Do you know how to say I love you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Ani ohev otcha. Ani ohev otcha. Ani ohev otcha. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say Ani daluk alaych. Ani daluk alaych. Ani daluk alaych. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say Milim lo yecholot letaer et ha'ahava sheli elecha. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Hebrew. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free romance and love cheat sheet. which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to hebrewpod101.com now. See you next time. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara, and today our top words will be 15 favorite words chosen by fans, which is... even more fun than usual, so I am genuinely excited to find out what you chose. So let's start. Ahava, love. Ahava is the noun and the verb is le'ehov, to love. Uh, you can use it um, to describe your love for people, animals, clothes or anything. Ahava hachi gdola sheli hi chatulim. My biggest love is cats. Oh, don't worry, I like you too. And Baya, no problem. Okay, for example, in the very Israeli phrase, Can you do me a favor? No problem. Altidag, don't worry. Ah, Altidag, it'll be okay. For example, Altidag, tipalti beze. Don't worry, I took care of it. Ima, mother. We don't have a mother mom thing, it's always Ima. תראי אימא, אני ביוטיוב. Look, mom, I'm on YouTube. היי! אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת ששפכתי עלייך את כוס הקפה שלי. I'm sorry I spilled my coffee on you. שמח. Happy. יום הולדת שמח. Happy birthday. For a female, it will be smecha, mita, bed. Yored geshem b'chutz, az ani rotza li yishayar b'mita kol ayom. It's raining outside, so I want to stay in bed all day long. Later out, see you. So you say it when you part with somebody, okay, later out. Which literally means something like to see each other. Later out b'pam ba'a. See you next time. Kavod, respect. Kavod is the noun, but you can also use it as a verb. Lechabed, to respect someone. There is this uh, iconic Israeli movie from the 70s, 70s or 80s, uh, called Kazablan. And it was a musical, and one of the most famous songs uh, from that movie is about respect. The main line is, Kulam hayu yodim az tov meod. למי יש יותר כבוד? Uh, everyone would then know very well who has the most respect. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sound a bit funny, but no, I didn't write it, so... ללמוד, to learn. It can mean to learn something new, it can mean to uh, study, and it can also mean what you do in school. Like, in English you would ask what university do you go to, And in Hebrew, you would ask, Be'ezo Universita at Lomedet, Ata Lomed, which means, what university do you learn in? So, yeah. Safa, language. Safa also means a lip. And another word for language in Hebrew is Lashon, which also means tongue. 
איזו שפה את רוצה ללמוד? What language do you want to learn? גדול. Awesome. גדול. Awesome. Uh, גדול literally means big or large, but you say it as awesome, yeah, גדול. איך היה בהופעה? היה גדול. Uh, how was the show? Awesome. It was awesome. Bis. בית. A very useful word is the word bis, which means a bite. אפשר לקבל ביס מהפלאפל שלך? Can I have a bite of your falafel? Be generous. Give people a bite of your falafel. חירות. Freedom. Uh, freedom has two words, חופש and חירות. You can use the word חופש for a vacation from school, but חירות is a much bigger word. And you can hear it a lot in Pesach, in Passover, in the term לצאת מעבדות לחירות. To go from slavery to freedom. Shalom. Peace. Shalom means peace. It can be used as hello, and it, it, it is used mostly as hello. When I was a little girl, there was a famous children's song uh, named Shalom Himila Shimushit. Shalom is a useful word, which is nice. This is it. These were the 15 top Hebrew words that you chose. And thank you for that. So don't forget to check out the website and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Kelev Dog Kelev Ke Live. Dog. Layeled yesh kelev machmad. The boy has a pet dog. Layeled yesh kelev machmad. Chatul. Cat. Chatul. Chatul. Cat. Hachatul betoch hakova. The cat is in the hat. Hachatul betoch hakova. Oger. Hamster. Oger. O ger. Hamster. אוגרים אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. Hamsters like to sleep during the day. אוגרים אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. חמים Warm חמים חמים Warm לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. We often play cards on a warm summer evening. לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. 
geshem rain geshem ge shem rain הגשם יורד על הרחוב the rain is falling on the street הגשם יורד על הרחוב עגבניה tomato עגבניה עג ון יא. טמטו. חתכתי עגבניה. I sliced a tomato. חתכתי עגבניה. תות. סטראברי. תות. תו. Strawberry. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה, אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. You can buy strawberries all year round, but they taste best in summer. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה, אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. דובדבן, cherry, דובדבן, דובדבן, cherry. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. This event was the cherry on my cream. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. ילד, child, ילד, ילד, child. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. The child is walking with the dog. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. חבר. friend. חבר. ח-ו-ר. friend. בילינו הלילה עם החברים שלנו. We spend time with our friends tonight. בילינו הלילה עם החברים שלנו. מבוגר אדולט מבוגר מבוגר אדולט לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. Sometimes being an adult just isn't very fun. לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. אופניים בייסקל אופניים אופניים בייסקל אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. The bicycle is a convenient way to get around the city. אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. אוטו car אוטו אוטו car אין לי אוטו I don't have a car אין לי אוטו אופנוע motorcycle אופנוע 
fa, noa. Motorcycle. Ofnoim hem mehirim. Motorcycles are fast. Ofnoim hem mehirim. Tustus. Scooter. Tustus. Tus. Tus. Scooter. Lirkav al tustus ba'ir ze noach. Riding a scooter in the city is convenient. Lirkav al tustus ba'ir ze noach. Sira. Boat. Sira. Si. Ra. Boat. Hasira shata bamain. The boat is moving through the water. Hasira shata bamain. Medusa. Jellyfish. Medusa. Me. Du. Za. Jellyfish. Hamedusa sochaba okeanus. The jellyfish is swimming in the ocean. Hamedusa socha ba okeanus. Lobster. 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 Lob. Ster. Lobster. Ha lobster nimtza al haeven. The lobster is on the rock. Ha lobster nimtza al haeven. Sartan. Crab. Sartan. Sar. Tan. Crab. Ani ohev lechol sartanim trim. I like fresh crab. Ani ohev lechol sartanim trim. Tsav. Turtle. Tsav. Tsa. V. Turtle. Tsav hayam soche bayam. The sea turtle is swimming in the sea. Tsav hayam soche bayam. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at HebrewPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom! Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Slicha, at medaberet anglit, or Slicha, ata medaber anglit. Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Slicha, which means excuse me in Hebrew. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use slicha and other words when apologizing in Hebrew. Slicha is a very common word and can be used in many situations. We can use slicha in both formal and informal occasions, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, slicha, kafe echad bevakasha. Excuse me, one coffee please. Slicha, kafe. Echad, bevakasha. Do you remember what bevakasha means? 
We can also use it when asking a question. סליחה, איפה רחוב דיזינגוף? Excuse me, where is דיזינגוף street? Sometimes we also hear people say, סליחה, um, which means, excuse me, um, when we want to draw somebody's attention. Also, in a situation when you want to make your way through a crowd, for example, סליחה is used. Israeli people use סליחה also for apologizing. For example, if you accidentally bump into a person while making your way through that crowd. We also use the word אני מצטער or אני מצטערת if you really want to apologize. You also might hear this phrase translated as forgive me or I'm sorry in English. אני מצטערת אני מצטערת If you're a woman and אני מצטער אני מצטער If you are a man. The phrase אני מצטער or אני מצטערת has a deeper meaning of apology than סליחה, although both mean I'm sorry. אני is I am, regardless of your gender. But the verb be sorry changes according to your gender. So מצטערת is I'm sorry or I apologize if it's a woman. And אני מצטער if it's a man. If you feel really, really bad about something and want to deepen the apology even more, you can just add מאוד to your apology, which simply means very much. We already used it in the lesson about self-introductions. Remember? שלום, אני יאנה, נעים מאוד. You can also add מאוד to get אני מאוד מצטערת. אני מאוד מצטערת. For a woman. Or, אני מאוד מצטער. אני מאוד מצטער. For a man. It simply translates as I'm really sorry into English. But please remember that you cannot use מאוד with סליחה. Now it's time for Yana's insights. If you are not sure about what will be the proper phrase to use as an apology, it's always your safest bet to simply use סליחה. In this way, Israeli people will definitely appreciate your politeness. Are you able to count in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Hebrew from 1 to 10. Hint, we already learned how to say 1 in this class. I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ad ha'pa'am ha'ba'a. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, how can you possibly read Hebrew if it doesn't have any vowels? The simple answer to this question is that people who are fluent in Hebrew know which vowels go with different words. For someone who knows any language well, it's really not as hard as it sounds. Try it. Here's a famous quote in English translation which the vowels removed. Take a minute to read this. Can you figure it out? That which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. Was it easier than you thought? Most English speakers don't practice this skill much, but imagine if you did this all the time. In reality, there are a few characters used sometimes to indicate vowel sounds in Hebrew, and even native speakers use them. I'll explain more about this in a later lesson. You now know how native speakers can read Hebrew without vowels. But what about Hebrew learners? There are a couple systems available to help non-native or beginner speakers read Hebrew text. The most common of these is the Nikud. Here's an example. תוך מספר שבועות החנות נסגרה. Do you see these dots and marks? They represent the vowel sounds and are called מיקוד. We go over this system in more detail in our Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy series. But for now, take comfort that there is help. 
there is also a number of systems of Roman transliteration. These almost always include vowels to help you read. For example, the sentence above can be read Toch mispar shavuot, hachanut nizgera. All beginner materials at hebrewpod101.com include this kind of romanization. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say thank you and how to respond. Let's start with the easiest one. Toda. Toda. It means thank you. If you want to show your sincere appreciation for something, say this phrase, Toda Rabba. Toda Rabba. The word Rabba means a lot, so Toda Rabba means thank you very much. It expresses a deeper appreciation for some personal kindness. What if you want to address the recipient when saying thank you? Here's the way to say it. Toda rabba lach. Toda rabba lach. When addressing to a woman, simply add the word lach. To a man, say Toda rabba lecha. Lach and lecha means to you. So it literally means thanks to you. Now you know three different ways to say thank you in Hebrew. But how do you respond if someone thanks you? If someone thanks you in Hebrew, simply say Bevakasha. Bevakasha. It means you're welcome. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. Thank you. Toda. Toda. Thank you so much. Toda rabba. Toda rabba. The polite way to say thank you to a woman. Toda rabba lach. Toda rabba lach. The polite way to say thank you to a man. Toda rabba lecha. And to respond, just say, Bevakasha. Bevakasha. Well done! If you're not sure about which one to say, just say, Toda. This can be used with anyone, anywhere, and at any time. You just learned three different ways to say thank you and how to respond in Hebrew. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Hebrew from the very first lesson, go to hebrewpod101.com. I'll see you next time. Toda rabba! Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, just what is the difference between Biblical and Modern Hebrew? Now, you may be attracted to Hebrew for any number of reasons. Perhaps you want to communicate with friends or family, or maybe you've interested in studying the many religious and classical texts written in Hebrew. Depending on your reasons for learning Hebrew, you may end up learning one of two very different languages. Biblical or Classical Hebrew was an ancient language that first emerged in the 10th century BC. Over the next centuries, the ancient Hebrew people used it to communicate and to take a record of their history, religion, philosophy, poetry and culture. A portion of this literary record formed the basis of Hebrew scriptures and also what came to be called the Bible. 
During the Roman period, the language evolved beyond recognition and later fell out of use in daily life, but it lived on in religious contexts. Hebrew experienced a revival in the late 19th century as part of the larger Zionist movement. Thanks to the effort of Eliezer ben Yehuda, who prepared the first modern Hebrew dictionary, people started using Hebrew again to communicate with one another as they went about their lives. But because of the influence of European languages, Hebrew changed. Grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, not a single aspect of the language went untouched by the transformation. And like any other modern language, Hebrew continues to change. So, for example, the word I or me in biblical Hebrew is anochi. This same word has changed in modern Hebrew to ani. Besides this change in pronunciation, modern Hebrew got a lot of new words from languages like French and German. For example, the word concrete or beton came from French, while schnitzel or schnitzel came from German. And of course, there are new words to describe things that did not exist in ancient times, like electricity, chashmal, computer, machshev, car, mechonit, telephone, telephone. At this point in history, someone familiar only with biblical Hebrew would not be able to communicate very well with contemporary native speakers. At the same time, a modern Hebrew speaker cannot easily read the Bible. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Shalom. Hello. He omeret shalom. She is saying hello. He omeret shalom. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Excuse me. Have you seen my dog? Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Animit staeret. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת. הוא לא נמצא כאן כרגע. I'm sorry. He is not here right now. אני מצטערת. הוא לא נמצא כאן כרגע. לילה טוב. Good night. לילה טוב. לילה טוב. Good night. 
שאת הולכת לישון, את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. When you go to sleep, you can tell me good night. כשאת הולכת לישון, את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. Nice to meet you, sir. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. מה שלומך? How are you? מה שלומך? מה שלומך? How are you? שלום, מה שלומך? Hello, how are you? שלום, מה שלומך? כן. Yes. כן. כן. Yes. כן. אני ישראלית. Yes. I'm Israeli. כן. אני ישראלית. לא. No. לא. לא. No. אוי, לא. השארתי משהו על הקיריים. Oh, no. I left something on the stove. אוי, לא. השארתי משהו על הקיריים. תודה. Thank you. תודה. תודה. Thank you. תודה על העזרה. Thank you for your help. תודה על העזרה. אני... I am... אני... אני... I'm... אני ליסה. I am ליסה. אני ליסה. שלום. Goodbye. שלום. שלום. Goodbye. שלום. להתראות בקרוב. Goodbye. See you soon. שלום, להתראות בקרוב. רע. bad. רע. רע. bad. האיש רע. the man is bad. האיש רע. טוב. Good. טוב. טוב. Good. היא בן אדם טוב. She is a good person. 
היא בן אדם טוב. יפה. פריטי. יפה. יפה. פריטי. את יפה מאוד. You are very pretty. את יפה מאוד. מכוער. Ugly. מכוער. מכוער. Ugly. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. That is a very ugly dog. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. קל. Easy. קל. קל. Easy. המבחן היה קל. The test was easy. המבחן היה קל. קשה. Difficult. קשה. קשה. Difficult. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. English is a difficult language. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. קרוב. Near. קרוב. קרוב. Near. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. I live near the university. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. רחוק. Far. רחוק. רחוק. Far. התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן. The station is far from here. התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן. קטן. Small. קטן. קטן. Small. המכונית קטנה. אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. The car is small, but it's very powerful. המכונית קטנה, אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Shalom, Ani Anna. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut. the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the sixth Hebrew letter, Vav, and three new Nikud. Do you remember how to write David and Uncle? What about electric water heater? In this lesson, we will learn two new Hebrew letters. So let's move on with the seventh letter, Zayn. The sound is Z. 
Let's write it in handwriting first. Does it look familiar? You might be reminded of the third letter Gimel in handwriting. Yes, you are right. They are the mirror images of each other. But don't get confused between them. Gimel faces this way. Zain faces this way. Okay, how about the print version? Fortunately, this one will be hard to confuse with the print version of Gimel. Even though they are pretty different in print, make sure you don't write Zain and Vav in too similar a way. Let's see the difference. Vav, Zain. Zvuv is a fly in Hebrew. Zvuv. And in print, Zvuv. You can easily remember this word since the fly makes this sound. Zvz. Let's move on. If you write Zain with a comma on the left side, it will sound like Z, as in the word journal or collage. First you write Zain and then add the comma on the upper left side. In print, Usually, the letter J is used for foreign words like jacket, a jacket, journal, a journal, and so forth. Now we move on to the eighth letter, Chet. This has the sound of Ch, and it is written like this. For the handwriting, keep the corners round, and in print, Chet. Almost the same, right? Always the print version will have sharper corners than the handwriting version. Ach is a brother in Hebrew. Ach. The pronunciation is important. Try to pronounce it more glottally from your throat. Chava is a farm. Chava. Here the handwriting and the print versions are almost the same. Let's write them. Chava. In print, Chava. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When writing Hebrew, Aleph Bet always start from the top, both in hand and print writing. In this lesson, we studied two new Hebrew letters, Zain and Chet, with the variation of J. Did you know that you have already mastered a third of the complete Hebrew Aleph Bet and the Nikud system? Good job! But how do you write good in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn this and two new letters plus one Nikud. See you then! Lehitraot! Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're going to talk about top Hebrew verbs, which are very useful verbs that will help you in everyday life uh, in your next visit in Israel. Yay! Lelechet, to go. Lelechet uh, also means to walk. Lelechet baregel, to walk by foot. So you can use it as to go on a trip. Lelechet letiyul, to go home. Lelechet abaita. Lavo to come. Lavo, to come, like, are you coming to the party? At Ba'al Amesiba. Are you planning to come to the party? At Matechnenet Lavo Lamesiba. Come to the party, it'll be fun. Lehagid, to say. Lehagid, Ani rotsa lehagid lach mashu. I want to tell you something. You can only use this verb in this form, at least in modern Hebrew. Lehagid, to say. Uh, you can't use it as I said. It doesn't work like that. Only in the infinitive form. Lehagid, to say. Lishmoa, to hear. Ba'erev, afshar lishmoa et atzfardeim. In the evening, you can hear the frogs. Lishmoa. La'asot, 
to do, to make. לעשות means to do, but it also means to make. Like לעשות בלאגן, to make a mess. אל תעשה בלאגן, don't make a mess. Or like don't make a big deal. אל תעשה עניין. לקחת, to take. Uh, you can use that like in English to take medicine or to take something from one place to another or to take it back. היה לי כאב ראש, אז לקחתי כדור. I had a headache, so I took a pill. לרצות, to want. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a dancer. כשהייתי קטנה, רציתי להיות רקדנית. רציתי is the first person past tense of לרצות. לחכות, to wait, like to wait in line, לחכות בתור. חיכיתי שעות בתור לפלאפל. I waited for hours in the line for the falafel. Oh, don't worry, it never happens. לקנות, to buy. אין לי כסף, אז אני לא יכולה לקנות כלום. I don't have money, so I can't buy anything. <laughs> לדעת, to know. How could I know? איך הייתי יכולה לדעת? להיות, to be. כשאני אהיה גדולה, אני רוצה להיות רופאה. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. להיות. לתת, to give. רציתי לתת לך מתנה. I wanted to give you a present. לחשוב, to think. You should try thinking about other people too. אתה צריך לנסות לחשוב גם על אנשים אחרים. להרגיש, to feel. Did you feel the earthquake? הרגשת את רעידת האדמה? לאהוב, to love. I love cats. אני אוהבת חתולים. I love other stuff too, but like cats are my favorite thing in the world, so... אני אוהבת חתולים. For a male speaker it would be אני אוהב חתולים. Because who doesn't love cats? Yes. לעזוב. To leave. To let go. אני לא רוצה לעזוב את הבית. I don't want to leave home. אל תעזוב את המעקה. Don't let go of the handrail. לעזוב. לעבוד. To work. I don't like working on weekends. אני לא אוהבת לעבוד בסופי שבוע. Nobody does. לנסות. To try. תמשיכי לנסות. בסוף זה יעבוד. Keep trying. Eventually it will work. Hopefully. לקבל. To receive. אני אוהבת לקבל מתנות. I love receiving presents. לקבל is to receive, but it can also sometimes mean to get something. To get what you deserve. לקבל מה שמגיע לך. In Hebrew you can also say לקבל מכות, which means to get beat up. And it literally means to receive beating. Can you say that? <laughs> Whatever. לדבר, to speak. תפסיק לדבר, אני לא יכולה לשמוע אותך כבר. Stop talking, I can't hear you anymore. לחפש, to search. I've been searching for my glasses for days. אני מחפשת את המשקפיים שלי כבר כמה ימים. למצוא. To find. If you ever watched any Disney movie, you'll know this sentence. למצוא אהבת אמת. To find true love. Aww. Uh, obviously, you can also use it to find, you know, objects. <laughs> uh, to find your glasses. למצוא את המשקפיים שלך. Uh, yeah, I don't do that very often. I look for them a lot, I don't find them very often. להתקשר, to call. This word literally means to contact, but these days, like in modern Hebrew, you only use it to say to call someone on the phone. ניסיתי להתקשר אלייך, אבל לא ענית. I tried calling you, but she didn't answer. Like if you call someone on the street, hey, that's, that's not להתקשר. להתקשר is only on the phone. לאכול, to eat. מה אתה רוצה לאכול? What do you want to eat? And while you're in Israel, make sure to go and have falafel. Go eat falafel. לכו לאכול falafel. לישון, to sleep. 
לילה טוב, אני הולכת לישון. Good night, I'm going to sleep. Okay, good night, I'm going to sleep. Yes, sleep, לישון. Okay, that was the end. Thank you so much for watching Top Hebrew Verbs. Which verb do you use the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Ah, oh, now I get it. It's so hot in here. Yes. <gasps>
Stein, meaning 20 and 2. It is very important, so don't forget that. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Hebrew? Let's take it step by step. 50 is 50. And then add the tiny V. And 6. 6. 50 and 6. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Hebrew. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Israel? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ada pama ba'a. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Hebrew, including slicha and ani mitztaeret, ani mitztaer. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Hebrew. Yes, numbers, misparim, from 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Beshalosh dakot. You already know the first number from last lesson and can make a full sentence. Do you remember? Kafe echad bevakasha. Ready? Let's start. Echad. Echad. Shtaim. Shtaim. Shalosh. Shalosh. Arba. Arba, Chamesh, Chamesh, Shesh, Shesh, Sheva, Sheva, Shmone, Shmone, Tesha, Tesha, and Eser, Eser. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat. Each one. Ready? Echad. Shtaim. Shalosh. Arba. Chamesh. Shesh. Sheva. Shmone. Tesha. Eser. Great job. What is before Echad? Do you know? It's Ephes. Ephes. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Hebrew. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase Hamispar Sheli Hu, which means my number is Hamispar Sheli Hu. המספר שלי הוא שלוש שלוש שבע אחד שתיים שתיים ארבע תשע שש שמונה. Can you read it by yourself? שלוש שלוש שבע אחד שתיים שתיים ארבע תשע Shesh Shmone. Perfect. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you travel in Israel, it's a good idea to start paying attention to the bus numbers, street numbers, dates, hours, and the local money, the shekel. It's the best practice to remember. You can start now if you are at your hometown to practice Hebrew numbers in your daily life. Do you know the Hebrew word for a hundred? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Hebrew. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson, from Echad till Eser. Lehitraot ve'ada pama ba'a. Bye!
Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Hebrew. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Hebrew, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if the answer is no. As already mentioned in previous lessons, in Hebrew there is a difference between male and female speech. So if you want to ask a woman, say, At medaberet anglit? At medaberet anglit? In Hebrew, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used according to the gender of both the speaker and the addressee. At, in this case, is the female pronoun for you. So the verb medaberet, which means speak, refers to a female. For example, if I said, I speak English, it will be ani medaberet anglit. Ani, as we learned already, means I am. And is the only way you can say I am in Hebrew, regardless of one's gender. Then, medaberet is the female conjugation for speak or speaking. So, ani medaberet anglit will be used only by a female speaker. On the other hand, if you're asking a man if he speaks English, you say, ata medaber anglit, ata medaber anglit, Ata in this case is the male pronoun for you. So the verb medaber, which means speak, refers to a man only. So if you're a man and want to say, I speak English, it will be ani medaber anglit. It is important to notice that in Hebrew the pronoun and the verb change according to female, male, and also to singular or plural of the same sentence. So basically there are four ways to say each phrase. But don't worry, we will talk more about that later. For now, please only remember that you can use both at medaberet anglit and ata medaber anglit only if you are addressing one person. So let's review them once again. At medaberet anglit if you are asking a woman and ata medaber anglit if you are asking a man. Adding slicha, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. Slicha, at medaberet anglit? Slicha, at medaberet anglit? Or, Slicha, ata medaber anglit? Slicha, ata medaber anglit? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ken, yes. Ken, ktsat, a little. קצת. לא. אני לא מדבר אנגלית. Or, לא. אני לא מדברת אנגלית. No, I don't speak English. לא. אני לא מדבר אנגלית. לא. אני לא מדברת אנגלית. To make every sentence negative in Hebrew, we only have to add לא before the verb, which simply means no. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Israeli people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Anglit with Rusit for Russian, Italkit for Italian, Sfaradit for Spanish, and Germanit for German. In this lesson we mentioned the expression slicha, but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Hebrew. It's never too late to show your good manners with Israeli people. I'll see you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot!
שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's אלף בית בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The אלף בית. In the last lesson we'll learn the third and fourth Hebrew letters, גימל and דלת. Do you remember how to write fish? And what about roof? In this lesson we will learn how to write the word for love in Hebrew. Are you ready? So let's start. בואו נתחיל. The fifth Hebrew letter is hey. Hey sound is ha, but it can also sound like ah. You will see how it changes in a second. Let's first write it in handwriting. Hey. The print version is very similar. Hey. Make sure to keep hey curved while handwriting, but use sharp angles in print. So, as I mentioned, hey can sound like both ha and ah. The word ahava uses it in both ways. When hey appears in the end of the word, it will always sound as ah. Ahava is love in Hebrew. Let's try to write it down. Ah, pronounced ha. Remember the sound here is v, so we don't need a dot of bet. Pronounce a. Let's do it once more in handwriting. Ahava. Ahava. Isn't it a beautiful word with a beautiful curved shape? Now let's do it in print. A. Ha. Va. So if you want to add the full Nikud for this word, we need to use a new Nikud symbol, Patach. Just like Kamatz from last lesson, Patach has the sound of A. Now remember, when you write in modern Hebrew, you don't need to use the Nikud system. It is there mostly for you to read, especially when learning new vocabulary, or if you want to study the Hebrew Bible. Now let's spell Ahava with the full Nikud. Ahava. A-ha-va. Ahava. Here's the print version. Here you saw how the letter Hey can sound in two different ways. So you already know five Hebrew letters and several words. Don't forget to practice the characters in both handwriting and print. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Doesn't hey from this lesson sound like hey in English? When you say hello to your friends? That's exactly the sound for the Hebrew letter hey. Now you can think of the letter hey when saying hello to your friends and memorize it better. In the next lesson, we will see how one word can be pronounced in three different ways in Hebrew. It may sound confusing, but remember, you'll have the Nikud to help you. See you next time. Lehitraot! Shalom, אני יאנה. היי, אבריבדי, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's עברית בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying תודה. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. אתם מוכנים? Are you ready? אז בואו נתחיל. So let's start. The most used greeting is שלום. שלום. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with 
בוקר טוב. בוקר טוב. Which means good morning. בוקר is morning and טוב is good. During the evening we also say ערב טוב. ערב טוב. ערב is Hebrew for evening, so ערב טוב means good evening. בוקר טוב and ערב טוב are used when we meet someone, but when we leave we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is להתראות. להתראות. It is actually more common to use להתראות than שלום when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, שלום. In the morning until the afternoon we say בוקר טוב. And in the evening, ערב טוב. When leaving in any situation, להתראות. Or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson we'll learn the meaning of the phrase אתה מדבר אנגלית or את מדברת אנגלית. Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next עברית בשלוש דקות lesson. להתראות, ביי! שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's אלף בית בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The אלף בית. In the last lesson we learned to write the most important word in Hebrew. אהבה, the word for love. Do you remember the ניקוד for אהבה? If you are not feeling confident about it, review the last lesson before continuing on from here. In this lesson, we will learn one new Hebrew letter and three more Nikud. Are you ready? So let's start. Bo natril. The sixth letter is Vav. The sound of Vav is V or O or U. And it's written like this. That's it. Vav has only one stroke from top to the bottom. The print version is the same for Vav, with only a small difference. In Hebrew, Vav is not only the name of the character, it's also a word by itself. It means a hook. Doesn't Vav look like a hook? You can write this word like this. It's just the letter Vav, two times. If you want to add Nikud, it will look like this. Now we move on to the next Nikud symbol, Chirik, with a sound E, like in C. It's just one dot under the letter, E. Now you can write a very common name, one that belongs to the second and perhaps most famous king of the ancient kingdom of Israel, David. It's written with two Dalet and one Vav. The Nikud here is important. Otherwise, it can have different pronunciation and meaning. Let's write this word. David. And now in print. David. The next Nikud for this lesson is Shuruk, with a sound U. This is how you make Vav sound like U. For example, if we take the same letters from David and instead of Chirik, we add Shuruk, it will be Dud, electric water heater. Perhaps now you can appreciate the power of learning the Nikud when you're first studying Hebrew. Let's write this word. Dud. And now in print.
dud. Notice how shuruk goes to the left of the vav. Seem complicated? Don't worry, we will review them all at the end of this lesson. But not before we will learn the last nikud for today. Cholam male, with the sound of o. This is how you make vav sound like o. Let's write this. D, o, d, dod. And now in print. Dod. Notice that cholam male appears above the vav. Now, shuruk and cholam male are only written with the letter vav and not with any other letter. Chirik, however, will appear below other letters. Now let's see all the last three examples together and make sense of them. First, we had David, Dud, and Dod. Now let's have a short quiz. I'll show you the Nikud symbol next to a letter and you have to pronounce its sound. Ready? A. U. I. O. A. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Since you will not see any Nikud in modern readings in Israel, you will have to guess by the context of the sentence which pronunciation and meaning it has. It all comes with the experience of studying Hebrew vocabulary. Another tip is when writing the letter Vav, it is important to keep the length of the stroke inside the frame. Otherwise, it becomes a different letter. But that's for later. So in this lesson, we studied the letter Vav and three Nikud in Hebrew. Chirik, Shuruk, and Cholam Male. In the next lesson, we will learn two more Hebrew letters. Zain and Chet. See you then. Bye. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Over the next 20 lessons, you'll learn everything there is to know about reading and writing Hebrew. By the end, you'll even be able to read some portions of the Hebrew Bible. Are you ready? So let's start. Bo Natchil. Hebrew has only one alphabet of 22 letters, so it's super easy. Once you know this, a few variations and a simple vowel system, you will be ready to read one of the most ancient languages in the world. As you may know, the Hebrew writing system is written from right to left. At first, this may seem intimidating or confusing, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Let's start with the first letter, Aleph. What sound does Aleph make? In Hebrew, the name of each letter starts with the sound you use to pronounce it which means the sound of Aleph is A. Ah. It is handwritten like this. Now, in Hebrew, there are always two ways to write a letter, the written way, which is used in everyday handwriting, and the print way, which you will see in books and newspapers, on signs and so forth. This is the written way. The print version looks like this. When Israeli kids first learn how to write, they use this print typewriting. It's useful, and as you'll see later, very easy to learn both versions of every letter. Let's do it again. Here's the written form. And here's the print form. You can now write your first letter in Hebrew. Good, let's move on. The second character is bet. The sound of bet is b, and it looks like this. Pay attention to the dot, it has to be in the middle. The print version is like this. If you leave out the dot, bet becomes vet. The sound of Vet 
is V, but we don't count Vet as a separate letter in the alphabet. So far, you've studied two letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and you've learned three sounds. Want to write them once again? Let's do it. Okay, here is Aleph. This is handwritten. Aleph in print. And now Bet. Handwritten. And Bet in print. Then Vet, handwritten. Vet in print style. Did you know you can already write a word in Hebrew? This is Abba. Abba in Hebrew means father. It is the first word every Israeli baby says. These are the simplest phonetic sounds. Try it out. Abba in handwriting. And now the print style. Abba. Great job! In this lesson, you learned the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, Bet. You also practice your first word, in both print and writing styles. Before we move on to the next lesson, I want to introduce the Hebrew vowel system. Among 22 Hebrew letters, there are five vowels, one of which we learned in this lesson. But beside those five, there is another vowel system called Nikud. Nikud are a series of dots or points that are used to indicate vowel sounds connected to consonants. Once you have more experience reading Hebrew, you may not see these symbols so often in native texts, but if you can master them when you start learning Hebrew, it will make learning Hebrew much faster and easier. The Nikud take the form of dots, lines, and combinations of the two, and are written in, under, on top, or beside consonant letters. Sound complicated? Don't worry, we'll take it slowly, and by the end of this series, they will seem easy. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Have you been writing as you watch? Hope so. There is no better way to master the alphabet quickly than to write them yourself. I also recommend that you make flashcards for each letter and study them whenever you get a chance. Do you know how to write Dag? the word for fish in Hebrew, it will definitely come in handy when you read a menu in Israel. And you learn that and much more in the next lesson. Lehitraot! Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Hebrew expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Hebrew. In Hebrew, there is no formal and informal language. You can use this introduction in both cases and keep it simple. However, in Hebrew, there is a difference between male and female language. Let's first see how Israeli people introduce themselves in a simple way. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. Start by saying Shalom, Ani, then saying your name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Finally say, Naim Od. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. 
And now let's see the same sentence if you wish to be more specific in addressing the person you are introduced to. If you're introducing yourself to a woman, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim od lehakir otach. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim meod lehakir otach. If you are talking to a man, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim meod lehakir otcha. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim meod lehakir otcha. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. The last part of the introduction has been changed based on the gender of the person you are talking to. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim meod lehakir otach for a woman versus Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim meod lehakir otcha for a man. Ani in this case has not been changed and in both cases stands for I am, regardless of your gender. The last sounds of the last word changes, however. Otach, if you are talking to a woman, and otcha, if you are speaking to a man. One more time. The simple way to introduce yourself in Hebrew is Shalom, Aniyana, Naim Me'od. In case you want to personalize the greeting, you say Shalom, Aniyana, Naim Me'od, Lehakir Otach. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od Lehakir Otcha. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Israel. If you don't want to worry about using the right word for men and women, just say Naim Me'od, as I said at the beginning of this lesson. There is no cultural importance if you add the last part to the introduction. It just makes the sentence more complete. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. Ada pama ba'a, till next time. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're gonna do uh, top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases you're gonna hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace, but we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma. How are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you, and it literally means what is heard. Like, yeah, like what have you been up to? What's going on with you? Manishma. Toda. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it, we don't have like, thanks or thank you, it's just, toda. Bevakasha. Please. Bevakasha, it means please, but it can also mean, there you go. So you can say, Efshar lekabel maim, bevakasha. Can I have water, please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, bevakasha, there you go. Slicha. Excuse me. Uh, it means, excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, slicha, slicha, slicha. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, oi, slicha, I'm sorry. Lehitraot, see you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. <laughs> Lehitraot. Uh, it's also very casual. Beseder, okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? Beseder. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, beseder. Uh, it literally means in order, like everything's in order. Tov. Fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally, it means good. A lot like beseder. How are you? Tov. To respond to a direction, like, uh, go that way, please. Tov. Fine, I understand. Allo davar. You're welcome. We use it as, you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, allo davar. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than bevakasha. Most of the times when people say toda, you answer bevakasha. You can also answer 
לא דבר. It's pretty much the same, though בבקשה is a bit more common. בוקר טוב. Good morning. בוקר טוב, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. בוקר טוב. לילה טוב. Good night. So yeah, good night you can say uh, when you leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, לילה טוב. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. You can definitely say that. But you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. Ma Shimcha, what's your name? For a male, it would be Ma Shimcha. For a female, Ma Shmech, what is your name? You can also ask Ech Kurim Lach, which literally means how are you called? And this is the most common way to ask. Naim Lehakir, nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say Naim Lakir Otach for a woman or Naim Lakir Otcha for a man. A4. Where? F4. Hatachana. Where is the station? F4 is very important. You should memorize this one. Ani Mevin. I see. For a woman, it would be Ani Mevina. I understand. I see. אני מבינה. מה השעה? What time is it? The literal translation would be what is the hour? This is how you ask. סליחה, מה השעה? Excuse me, what time is it? אפשר בבקשה לקבל? Can I please have? אפשר בבקשה לקבל מים? Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. אפשר בבקשה לקבל? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? שירותים is restroom. איפה השירותים? Another one to memorize. אני מצטער. I am sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת להפריע. I am sorry to interrupt. כן. Yes. You can... Use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo. No. I like this word. It has a fun sound. And it was my sister's first word. Lo. No. Bali. I feel like. Bali. It's two words. Bali. And it means I feel like I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. Lo bali. ללכת לבית הספר. I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Die. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. When someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die. Stop it. Enough. Yeah. כמה זה עולה? How much is it? כמה זה עולה? How much is it? How much does it cost? Me'ule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome, uh, it's me'ule. The masculine form is me'ule and the feminine is me'ula. Like, ha'ofa'a uh, zot me'ula. This show is awesome. It's great. Ech haya tiyul? Haya me'ule. How was the trip? It was me'ule. Great. Awesome. Okay, that's it for today for Top Hebrew Phrases. Thank you so much for watching. And what is your favorite Hebrew phrase? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Phrase. <laughs> I forgot my name. שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's א' ב' בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the א' ב'. In the last lesson, we learned the first two letters of the א' ב'. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we'll move on to the next couple of letters and the first ניקוד סימבו. 
So let's start. בואו נתחיל. The third letter of the alphabet is Gimel. The sound of Gimel is G. Let's first see how to write it by hand. Gimel in handwriting. And in print it looks like this. Gimel. They look quite different, don't they? But the good news is that you already can write another Hebrew word, gag. This means roof in handwriting. Gag. And in print it looks like this. Gag. Here you may be a little confused. If you were to see this word written, you might want to read it as gag. There is no vowel sound. In Hebrew, the vowels are often not written. You would know that this word is pronounced gag because it has been taught to you before. And this is why the Nikud is so important. The Nikud shows learners of the Hebrew language what vowel sound is used in words, but don't rely on them too much. As you get more experienced with Hebrew, you should be able to remember how to read words, even if the Nikud is not attached. Now it's time to introduce to you the first Nikud. Remember, Nikud are small points and lines that are placed in, under, on top, or beside consonants. The first one has the sound A, just like Aleph. This is Kamatz, and it looks like this. And it's always written right under the consonant letter. Let's write Ruf a couple more times while pronouncing its sound, A. So for example, Gag in handwriting looks like this. Gag, and in print, Gag. Also, the word Abba has kamats under two of its letters. Abba, and in print version, Abba. So now you can read and write two words in Hebrew using the full vowel system. You can adjust the sound of the letter Gimel by writing a comma right here. Now it is read J, as in the name George. First the Gimel, and then the comma on the upper left side. And in print it looks like this. So now let's move to the fourth letter, Daled, with the sound of D. Daled. That's it, just one curve for the handwriting. And Daled in print looks like this. Daled. So let's make another word with the letter Gimel and Daled. Here, Dag means fish. This will come in very handy whenever you are in a restaurant. Let's write it. Da G And now in print. Da G Now it's time for Yana's insights. Don't get lost in studying and forget the real world. Find Hebrew letters around you. Don't see any alphabet letters around you? Go to hebrewpod101.com and check out the alphabet transcripts for every lesson dialogue. You may not be able to read them all yet, but you can get a feel of how the Hebrew letters are used in real life. Do you know what ahava means? It's the most romantic word in Hebrew. You will be able to write and read this and much more in the next lesson. See you then. Lehitraot! Shalom, אני יאנה. היי, אבריבדי, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's עברית בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. 
In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem uchanim? Are you ready? As bon atchil. So let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Sha-lom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov, Boker Tov, which means good morning. Boker is morning, and Tov is good. During the evening, we also say Erev Tov, Erev Tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so Erev Tov means good evening. Boker Tov and Erev Tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is Lehit Raot. Le, hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use Lehit Raot than Shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, Shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say Boker Tov and in the evening Erev Tov. When living in any situation, Lehitraot or simply Bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit or At medaberet anglit. Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot. Bye! Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets.